ladies and gentlemen, you are joining me for a very special version of the Not Very Late Show. It's the Heidi High Reunion. So let's say hello to the cast members. Hello, campers. Heidi High. Heidi ho. Heidi Oh, indeed. Thank you, Ruth. Cool. So please, once again, go on mute. If you can, go on mute, cast members. So my name is Kevin Durham. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at the Kevin Durham. Now, I'm now going to go through an uh, agenda and just let you guys know how the call is going to run. So in uh, a few moments, I'll ask uh, all the cast members to briefly introduce themselves with a quick line on who they played in Heidi High and what they do now. Uh, after that, we'll go straight into the memory slash blooper section. So this is where the cast members will share a memory or blooper from the show. Now, as there are six people on the call, I want to give everyone an equal amount of time to share. I also want to keep things really intentional so we have more time for the fan Q&A at the end. So each person will have a very strict five minutes on the clock. When there's one minute left, I'll make some kind of warning sound uh, to let the cast member know they have one minute left to wrap up. Now, for this section, I will ask that the other cast members remain on mute unless they are prompted to come off by mute by the person speaking. So let's say, for example, you know, Nikki's sharing a story about Heidi High and she chucks it over to Ruth. Then Ruth, you're more than welcome to come off mute and interact with Nikki about the story. Um, we will be playing a game of celebrity knobbly knees. We'll see how that goes doing this just solely through Zoom. Um, and there's also a Heidi High quiz, which is really hard and really, really good questions put together by really Richard Darby, who runs a very popular Heidi High page. Now, after everyone has shared and the games are complete, I'll then open it up to a live Q&A session on the chat. So look, you're more than welcome to post a question th throughout the kind of memory blooper section, but I won't go into the questions until right at the end. Uh, so if you do want to put a question forward, please do put the cast member's name first in caps followed by your question. And now the final thing is that this is live. And I'm sure the cast members will tell you when anything is live, there's an added degree of risk of things going tits up, basically. So if for whatever reason, the stream goes down and I had to start a new one, please do log on to my Twitter feed. It normally takes me about three to five minutes to start a new one. Fingers crossed it won't happen. It might do, who knows? Uh, but if that does happen, please log on to my Twitter feed. I'll get things up and running again within five minutes. So now I'm gonna chuck it over to the cast members for their introductions. So starting with Linda. Linda in 30 seconds or less, please tell us your character on Heidi High and what you do now. Hello, I'm Linda. Yes, I, and my character was April. I was in love with Spike, with the most gorgeous. Isn't he dapper now? Look at him, Jeff Holland. Um, what I do now is I still act, I'm still working, and I also write crime novels, which are on my website, lindaregan.co.uk. Just got that in. But <laughs> I was April, the um, teddy bear loving yellow coat, and also Spike. I was in love with Spike very much. If I was that 30 seconds or shall I carry on? That's about 23. That's perfect, Linda. And going straight over to David. David, please take yourself off mute. Hello, I am David Webb. I am one half of the Webb Twins and I played the part of uh, one of the twin yellow coats, obviously, and I was Stanley Matthews and I wore this lovely coat for eight uh -huh. wonderful years and it was great fun. And what I do now is I make videos and um, corporate videos and um, documentary videos. So I'm a very happy and lucky boy. Fantastic. Thank you, David. And over to you, Nikki. Hello, everybody. Um, I, it's Nikki Kelly, and I played Sylvia. And um, Gladys and I, as I'm sure she'll back me up, were, were great friends, really, <laughs> deep down. She really did love me, but she found it hard to show me. Um, yes, we had a running, a running sort of rivalry, I think, that went on. And um, yeah, all sorts of other things. And, and I'm afraid that one of the teddy bears of Linda's, we did hang from the light bulb in the dressing room one yes, year. I was going to do that story, but yes. yes okay, sorry, that comes later. We've got one or two little um, incidents that happened over many years. So yeah, we've got books of them. 
That's cool. it. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> and we're going to move on to Ruth. So, Ruth, 30 seconds or less, your character on IDI and what you do now. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ruth Mardek and I play Gladys Pugh. Um, uh, she was the chief yellow coat and she had to contend with uh, Nikki uh, with all her pranks and the other yellow coats that used to get up to pranks as well. Um, I had a wonderful part. Uh, she had uh, depths and qualities I never knew I had as an actress. <laughs> she was fabulous to play. Uh, and I played opposite two very good leading men, Simon Cadell and David Griffin, in the time that we were actually doing this series. It was just wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ruth. And moving over to Sue. <laughs> Are you with us, Sue? Are you with us, Sue? Is Sue gone? Okay, over to Jeffrey until we get Sue back. He's mute. Is she muted? She's muted uh, herself. Let's see. Hang on. She is <laughs> muted. Hang on. I'll ask her to unmute. I'm putting in a formal request via Zoom to see if. Oh, no, I think we we got we got Sue. Oh yes, I've come back. I'm not turning that switch off. I'm absolutely backward in technological department. So stuff that. I should stay on, but learn to keep quiet. Yes, okay. I'm super bad and I played Peggy Orenshaw, the Sally maid, but she was desperate to be a yellow coat because that meant that when you were a yellow coat, that were the higher echelons of the entertainment business and you could do all sorts of fabulous things. And we just had the greatest fun. I loved it all. Thank you. That's it in a nutshell. Perfect. Cool. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> and over to you, Jeffrey. Oh, me? No, thank you. Yeah, I played Spike Dixon, uh, the hapless, they call him hapless, wonderful word, hapless, you know, useless, basically, camp comic, camp comedian. Uh, it got me in there to dress up in all these ridiculous frocks. And, uh, you know, I, I'd done that lot for David and Jimmy in, the, in Dad's Army stage show long ago. So when they got me into Heidi High to play the comedian, it was based on what Jimmy did at Butlins. Uh, I had a wonderful time. And uh, first of all, falling in love with lovely April, played by Linda. And then, uh, of course, Spike had a, a passion for, for Gladys. And he, he went for Gladys in a big way and he, he got all, all steamy and hot. But uh, you know, he was, he was <laughs> doing to marry April and go back to the tax office at the end of the day. But it was a wonderful time for me, a fantastic time. And look, we're all still talking about it 40 years later. Isn't it That's hard? fantastic. Cool. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. That was really nice. Uh, so we are going to move on to the memory or blooper section, um, starting with Linda. So Linda, please take yourself off mute. Let's okay. get the lovely yeah. Linda. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, Linda, you have five minutes or less to share a memory or blooper from the show. And your time starts now. Well, I think we're done. We started the teddy bear story, so I'll finish it. Um, I am a teddy bear collector, and they wrote an episode of me um, of, of April's birthday party, and she wanted to have it in the teddy bear's picnic, which had, of course got in everybody's nerves and <laughs> Nikki's, Sylvia's nerves, very much so. But I mean, being a teddy bear collector, I I I, I oohed and aahed and drove everybody mad all week with these teddy bears all around the rehearsal room and studio. I got in everyone's nerves. Seriously, I hold my hand up to that. And anyway, on the Friday lunch. <laughs> studio Nikki Jeff and Paul unbeknown to me hung my teddy bears and I came back to find them all hanging from the ceiling um so they were all dead teddy bears so I was very 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 <laughs> upset I shouted and screamed and ranted behaved like a sport child and at the time I was living with a detective and do you remember this Jeff I got him to <laughs> say uh, a, th um, a, a, a notice saying um, you were remand, you're going to be remanded and arrested for the murder of teddy bears. But what you didn't know was that it was brought into the rehearsal room. Do you remember by sight, motorcyclists or with, um, they were at actually mates with um, helmets on. So you didn't really know it wasn't real. And you and all, all of you went into the corner to look up what you were being summoned for. And it was for the murder of, of all the teddy bears. That was one of my favorite stories. And but. when you say they were they were hanging, you were like literally hanging with a with yeah, a noose. So they got string and they'd hung them with the light bulb. Uh, by the light bulb. I, I'm sure it was I'm I would believe I would be, I would think Sylvia was behind all that. <laughs> and Paul and Jeff went along with it, gentle Jeff. Um 
But uh, yes, they had string and they all round all the teddy bears necks and they were there electrocuted and dead when I came back from that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. And I screamed at everyone, talked to anyone, would I, for the rest of the day. And that clout, do you remember that clout I gave you, Jeff? And everybody kept saying in the studio, oh, she's never going to hit him. She won't hit him. She won't like, and I wouldn't do it during rehearsal. Um, and um, David kept saying to me, you have to hit him. I said, I will on the night. I don't want to hurt him during rehearsals. And he said, no, no, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. I said, I will hit him on the night. But you know, on, in hindsight, I should have hit you on the dress rehearsal. So you knew what was coming because he had a big scene to follow. Well, on the night at the, um, when I had to hit him, I gave him such a wallop, didn't I? Poor <laughs> I knocked him into next week and he had a big scene to follow so I apologize I should have given you a warning by doing it on the dress rehearsal but um, I was saving you from a red face at, at, at the time there's so many there's so many lovely stories have I gone over my time no no you've, you've oh, got have, two minutes left I've got two okay well when I first joined I was absolutely I love this show my dad worked on holiday camps I absolutely adored this show when I came in I was in complete awe of everyone because I came in late I came in after four four series um and I thought they were all absolutely wonderful and first down location fans were everywhere and they were sort of you know grabbing everybody's all the member all around Sylvia like a bee's nest and um everybody was just autograph hunting everywhere and I was just had my eyes wide open it was just such wonderful I thought I'm here I'm in this show um and I stood back and then Wardrobe came put my yellow coat on as soon as they put the yellow coat on me everybody started swarming around and saying oh you in it now and and, and, and that was the first time I had seen that kind of um you know I'd had that kind of autographs people coming at me because I'd been you know in rep for 11 12 years and being medium-sized parts and other tv so um that was that's so a determined to be on my behavior um and <laughs> I remember one of the very first scenes I was running along the chalet knocking for fire telling everybody what was fire in the chalets one minute and left one minute I had a very very large pair that wardrobe had given me of slippers at size seven I think and I'm a size four and I was running along in these high fluffy slippers and of course I fell and twisted my ankle and I couldn't get up and finish the scene <laughs> it was the day before I think we finished filming and I was thinking oh my god all these people and they're all so wonderful and there's me messing up you know the the, the last day of filming um and that we'd had there was always a spare day at the end of filming and and David Cross said well right that's it we can't finish that scene we'll have to come in tomorrow and I had all these people who I adored and worshipped and and everything going oh my god we can't have a line in the morning and <laughs> I that so that 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 was they're my memories some of just some of them were so many wonderful ones and just to finish to say I'm you know I was absolutely honored they're all these people are wonderful they're wonderful performers they're wonderful actors and they're wonderful people with wonderful hearts end up oh that's beautiful thank you so much Linda that's yeah. just making me choke a little bit um okay and uh over to you David uh your time starts starts, I like to that you. Uh, starts now I remember all the fun. It was just, it was, it was, it was a really happy company, and um, it was like a family, really. I can remember because the holiday camp used to close down the second Saturday of September, and uh, the BBC technicians would be in there on the uh, on the Sunday and up uh, the, the second Saturday, and we were going to London, and um, it was like meeting up your old pals after a school, you know, summer holiday at school, and you meet up all your old mates, finding out what they'd all been doing. And I have such wonderful memories of these rehearsal rooms at Acton. They were ginormous things. And I and, and dear Felix Boness, I got memories of him. He was he used to be a, a, a boxer. He'd uh, been a, in, in the army. He'd been a professional, not a, a successful boxer in the army. And suddenly you look around and he was doing his shadow boxing routine and stuff like that. <laughs> And, um, and then he pretended he was like Bob Willis, the England fast bowler, and he'd done about 20 yards and pretend to bowl a ball. And um, it was just great fun. I, um, I remember all the humour. We had lots of laughs, obviously, on the screen, but we had lots of laughs behind. So, and I remember Barry's irreverent humour and um, <laughs> <laughs> say stuff we couldn't possibly repeat. Um, I remember dear um, uh, I'm Paul. 
Paul Shane, and um, he was wonderful. And, and Paul had grown up in the working men's clubs like Tony and I, because we were a double act, singing act, and some impressions from comedy routines. And Paul had come up through the working men's clubs as well. And uh, we used to sort of make each other laugh with stories of these working men's clubs. And we always used to tell the tale of this uh, poor comedian who died on his backside in this working men's club. And, and the concert secretary going up to him after was saying, hey, lad, you, you've done some damage here tonight. It would take us a week to get him back in this club. <laughs> And, 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 and whenever we saw Paul, we come out and say, hey, you, you've done some fucking damage here tonight. <laughs> and uh, wonderful Leslie Dwyer. Uh, I'd, I'd like, I enjoyed talking to him about his career because he had a wonderful career in all the old great um, British movies. And he'd also been in a film with Kirk Douglas and Bridget Bardo. And his father had been um, a music hall comedian. And he loved talking to him about those old days. And um, he was a very bright man, was Leslie. He used to come to work, he stayed with the Times uh, newspaper and do the, the Times crossword. And uh, it, was, it was just a, it, because of a kind of cross section, where you had your kind of, your, your legit actors and those that had come from um, the variety side of stuff mm -hmm. like dear old uh, um, Felix. But it was just a, a very, very happy time. And um, that's all I can think to say at the moment. It was just happy fun and, and, and you can tell how much we loved each other because we're still talking all these years afterwards. And, um, you know, it was just great fun. Great, great fun. Beautiful. Do, do you have any examples of any bloopers, David? Any time that you remember that anything went wrong on the show? Well, um, there was the time when we took the cart caught the, we, there was the, uh, the carnival when uh, uh, <laughs> Matlin's entered a float into the Crimpton on Sea Carnival. And it was the job of uh, the, the, this, this float caught fire. And it was a job, we, we dressed up as a Western thing, we were dressed up as cavalry officers. And we had to pull this cart into, into the pool to um, put the fire out. And, and we hadn't rehearsed running into the pool. With the, we were wearing uh, kind of, uh, horses, fiberglass horses. And we hadn't rehearsed running into the pool with these horses on. We should have done because it, once you hit the water with these horses, we all went under. And, um, and my brother <laughs> went under, and dear Chris Andrews, the other yellow coat, he went under. Simon Cadell saw the danger. He jumped off the cart and Jeffrey rescued Tony. So that, that was fun. And, and the other um, thing I remember about the pilot of the show. Um, uh, one minute. Uh, one minute. Oh, yeah, very, very quickly. Um, the, the Jeff, Sue and, and, and uh, uh, Ruth and, and, and the others, they on the pile to save a bit of money, they decided to sleep in the chalets of Holy Camp. And this was October and it was bitterly cold. And of course the, the, the chalets were damp and they never got much sleep at all. But because Tony and I live quite near the camp, we went home to warm beds and warm wives. So uh, I felt sorry for the guys then, but they'll probably tell you that story a little bit later. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, David. That was great. That was really great. Uh, cool. So guys, we've now come to a point for our first game. Now, as a kid, I was dragged to many, many holiday camps and uh, my granddad would always enter the knobbly knees competition. And be honest, I don't remember one that he lost. He had the most grotesque knobbly knees I'd ever seen. So we've got a game of celebrity knobbly knees. So what? how it works is that and you can all come off mute for this section, by the way. I'll show you six different celebrity knees. Each one has been assigned a letter. I'll read a quote from that person with that knee. After I've read the quote, you can then guess who that knee belongs to. But here's the thing. If you take a guess on the letter and you get it wrong, you can't guess on the same letter again. So let's say, for example, uh, on the first one, Nikki says, uh, I don't know, Margaret Th Thatcher or something. And <laughs> It would be it would be wrong, obviously, because uh, that would be weird. Um, uh, then she can't guess on that letter again. Um, so if 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 no one guesses uh, with the quotes the first time around, I'll go through letters again, just giving really obvious cute clues, just so we can move on. Uh, so I'm going to try screen sharing with Zoom. Hang on one second. Let's see if this will work. Uh, but 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 and hopefully, if I do this. You should see my screen. Do you all see the screen with knobbly knees? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to start with the letter A. So the letter A, so the quote from that person 
is quirky is sexy, like skulls or chipped teeth. I also like tattoos. They're rebellious. So who could that be? Madonna. Nikki say Madonna, and it's not Madonna. You cannot guess on this letter, Nikki. Any more guesses? Uh, I say yeah. Paul, Pauline Quirk. Pauline Quirk? <laughs> Blimey, what happened to her? <laughs> um, no, that's, it's not Pauline Quirk. No, I was not... going to say Kathy Burke. Kathy Burke? Yeah. Nah, it's not. <laughs> it's not Kathy Burke. Uh, I would say David Williams. No, <laughs> it's not David Williams. <laughs> not even close, Linda. Um. Well, I, um. I, well, I actually haven't got a clue. Um. So I. I um. Um. Who? Who's? Don't I? I think they are. Uh, uh, Chris Evans. For A. No. Okay, I'll, I'll just go straight for the obvious clues now so we can move on. So um, for A, uh, the clue would be, she will be there for you unless you're Brad Pitt. Angelina Jolie. Oh, no. Angelina Jolie, yeah. No. No, the girl from Friends, what's her name? Who's oh, that? Who's that? I'll be there for you. Yes, it's one of them. Yeah, who is it? Which one? Jennifer. Yes. And hey! I don't well know who got the point. There. We've got it between us, girls. We've got it between us. That's four Polly. There we go. I thought it was a bit David as well. I heard Aniston from David, I think. Oh, um, no. Well done. Well done. Yes. Yes. Well done, everyone, because we were all very near. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Okay. So, next one is uh, okay. Here, here's the quote. Uh, I'll make it a bit more obvious. Um, he's American, obviously male, he's hairy, and uh, he makes movies. So the quote is, claiming that someone's marriage is against your religion is like being angry at someone for eating a donut because you're on a diet. Right. American, makes movies. George Clooney. Nope. But well, if you say he makes movies, is he an actor or is he a director? Both. Yeah. And a writer. And a writer. Clint Eastwood. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, he doesn't look that old, does it? Yes. Quite lovely. Ben Affleck. Nope. All right. Think um, Pineapple Express. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, think The uh, Interview. Think Interview. Uh, think Stoner. Uh, Machine Gun Law. Oh, does, oh, does he have drugs? He, he has drugs, quite a lot to write. Oh, you see, when you said stoner. Mm. He, he laughs like this. <laughs> <laughs> Who on earth is this? I can't wait. Go on, Pollard. <laughs> uh, oh. Clueless, I am. Hang on. I might so, just need to, to his age. Could you, could, could you give us 50s, 60s? Or oh, he's 70s. in his late 30s, I think. Maybe early, very early 40s or, or late oh, 30s. Right, right. Good oh, eggs. I like them. The queen. No. Sausage, sausage Party. The main guy who wrote Sausage Party. I've never seen any of these. I think I'll need to give it. It's Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. We'll move on. Oh, right. Oh, yes, right. These He's really good. I've never seen him, but oh, I know of him. Very funny. Very good writer. Uh, yeah. Someone got that on the chat. Hey, Mash Bin, right. Bin I think, got it on the chat. Um, Who's so, number C? Right, number C. C. Uh, so the quote is, I am odd looking. I sometimes think I look like a funny Muppet. Uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, I know. Uh, Woody Allen. No. I know. No. Yes. Nicholas Lindhurst. <laughs> no. <laughs> too smooth to be a guy, surely. Uh, Jason. Uh, no, I'll give you a clue. Uh, two of you said the name earlier. Oh, God. So are we talking female here yes. again? Female. Female. Uh, director. Oh, female. Director. One of them was Angelina Jolie Ooh. that you mentioned, and one was Madonna. You got it. You got so it, Sue. Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, Angelina oh, Jolie. Well done, Sue. Well, 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 I'm sorry, God, dear. Her knees look far better off in the National <laughs> Enquirer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, D, I'm kind of hoping D's an obvious one. So, 
if the quote is, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back to you, it's yours. If it's run over by a car, you don't want it. So that looks it like looks it's like an animal. Yeah. Nasty, yeah. More of an alien. Doctor Who. That's what I thought. If it's oh, is it one of these um, kind of like double, you know, answer questions, Kevin? I bet it is. Nah, I'm not that clever. <laughs> I'm not that clever, Sue. Um, yeah. All right, think uh, American <laughs> show. Say again. Is it an animal's knee? It's it an looks alien. Like an animal from me. It's an alien. Oh, it's an alien. He had his own TV show, oh, well, very big in the eighties. It it ran for quite some time. Oh, it wasn't. Um, was it the fabulous Mork and Mindy? Bigfoot. No, no. Yeah. Um, oh God. No, is, can, can anyone get it on the chat? Someone says Chewbacca on the chat. No. Harry from Harry the Hendersons. No. Uh, but he had like a quite a big, like uh, kind of uh, almost like a pig like nose. Hey, hey. It was quite quite a cool guy, quite a cool alien. Very furry. Alien. I don't think I watched any television in the 80s. <laughs> I was too busy. <laughs> he had the three letter name. Oh, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it on. We, lots of people guessing. Everyone guessing. Oh, up. William got it, Richard got it, James got it, and my mum, who's also watching, got it. Luke got it, Elvis got it, Ruth got it, Ruth Borton, Gary, Mev. Everyone's, yeah, Mev is going crazy with the answer. Um, I'll give it to you guys. <laughs> it was Alf. It was Alf. Oh. Well, right. Alf. Well, some of you guys out there that got it all, many congratulations. That's fabulous. Yes, congratulations to you all. Right, given those answers, uh, the next two might be a stretch, but uh, let's see where we go. So the next one, uh, the quote is, I don't even listen to rap. My apartment is too nice to listen to rap in. So that's the quote. He's um, very, very wealthy. He's a rapper. American. Oh. Super wealthy. I think he's a billionaire. Eminem. No, <laughs> from colour. <laughs> Are we talking Kanye West? Oh, yes. there you go. Boom, Sue. It's on you. Yeah. You got it, Sue. You got it, Sue. We got it. Yeah. Well done. Yay. Okay, well next done. one. Next one, F. I'm, I'm guessing lots of people in the chat are going to get this one very quickly. Um, so, F. The quote is, rubber, lubber. Wait, rubber. I can't say it. Wubber, lubber, dub, dub. Rubber, lubber, dub, dub. It looks like a duck of some sort. Finstones, yeah. Finstones. No, it's um a modern a modern cartoon, adult comedy. I think Adult Swim do it. And is it the Simpsons? No, 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 no. It's it's uh, more of a rude kind of comedy. Uh there's like an old kind of grandpa guy, he's always coughing. Um this episode, uh the one of the main characters was turned into a pickle. <laughs> no. No. Is, it, is it family guy person? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll I'll give it. I'll give it. It was Rick from oh. Rick and Morty in the episode Pickle Rick. Uh, that might have been oh, too obscure, right? That was just too obscure. Too obscure. I was asleep for 20 years. I must have been because I don't remember one minute of that. That's oh, fair enough. Man, very good animation, if you haven't seen it, by the way. Very good. So let's go straight <laughs> back in uh, to the uh, the memories and bloopers section. Uh, going over to you, the lovely Nikki. So oh, Nikki, you. if you're ready, your five minutes to share your memory or blooper. Well, one of my... I've, I, I've got so many, um, but I don't know how many of them are censored. Most of them are censored, so I'm limited. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Sue? <laughs> Um, I was known by John Kilby, who was one of our directors. Um, he used to come, we used to be called into um, um, the makeup room at 6.30 in the morning. Can you imagine anything more ridiculous? And, you know, we, we did have quite a good social life in the evenings, most of us. And so John Kilby used to walk along the row behind us when we were being made up at 6.30 in the morning and, and stop at my place and look at my poor makeup girl who was doing her best to sort of fill in the cracks and put me back together and say, Yes, you're an afternoon actress, aren't you? 
So, yes, that was one of my favourite memories. I don't think I've ever changed. I think I probably still am. But anyway, yeah. Um, so many. Yeah, I mean, one of them that was the cart, of course, when somebody was nearly, well, yes, when Tony was nearly killed, wasn't he, David? That was um, not a very, very, yes. Yeah. That was hairy. Um, um, one of my favourite memories, I think, probably was snogging Simon Cadell in the Punch and Judy tent. That was good fun. Because <laughs> I was given that. I was given action and nobody said cut. So um, <laughs> it was you. everybody was laughing so much that yeah, um, that was lovely. So, I mean, the, the whole cast was glorious to work with. So, you know, the memories are just, they keep tumbling here and there and everywhere. Um, yeah, um, goodness me. I mean, Ricky, Ricky, how Ricky Howard, who is one of the of our many lovely yellow coats, who's still a great friend of mine. Um, she was absolutely appalling. There was one episode, and I don't actually remember which one it was, but I had the first line in the studio, and um, the camera was right on me, and we got action from the floor manager, and so the camera was right on me, and Ricky was doing a rude gesture, which I couldn't possibly tell you what it is. Um, you could, actually, if you wanted to. Yeah. Me, I got action, so I had to go for the line, and she did the rude gesture, and I just burst into, into laughter, couldn't speak. <laughs> then we went to I mean, David Croft was known as One Take David, you know, and so yeah. and he was up in the, in the gallery and he didn't know what I was laughing at. And, and, and so anyway, we went again, take two. And of course, you know, turnover, sounds running, action, boom. And she does the same thing again, but even more graphic. And then third time, fourth time, by about the fourth time, the um, the um, person on the floor, the, the uh, floor manager was getting in his ears from David. If Nikki could share with us what we're laughing at, you know, that would be absolutely marvellous and the whole studio could laugh with you. But I could, well, of course I couldn't share it, you know. So um, yeah, that was one very, very steamy, difficult moment because I couldn't stop Ricky doing it. She was off camera and yeah, four or five takes. And in the end, he got quite cross because only because he couldn't share the joke with us. Yeah, um, I think. What I was the gesture? I'm, no, I'm getting, dying to know. What was I, the gesture? I absolutely can't tell you. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use my imagination. Um, and um, then I'm sure Jeff will tell it much better than I will. Um, when um, we had uh, Peggy was in the shark, and it was it happened to be an extremely cold day. I think the the water that day, Jeff, help me here, darling. It was something like fifty two degrees. Am I wrong on that? Lower. 42, I don't know what it was, but it was absolutely freezing. And the, and the yellow coats were in bikinis. Jeff was in a wetsuit. So when the shark started supposedly drowning and we all dived in to save the shark, we dived in and we were fine, but Jeff died, dived in, in a wetsuit and his legs went dead and he had to pull out, but we carried on in our bikinis. But um, we were given the afternoon off and we were given whiskey afterwards, which was the best day, day's work I'd had for a long time. So, um, yeah. Well, um, uh, one minute left, if you want to take it, Nikki. Um, I don't think I want to take it because I'll say too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of what we want. Um, but Nikki, that was that was really fantastic. Thank you so much for that. That was, uh, that was great. And now we're going to chuck it over to Ruth. Oh, well, my memories of uh, Heidi High um, are comedy is a serious business, Nikki Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and that came from David Croft. Because, yes, you could muck around an awful lot in Heidi High because it, it, it lent itself to it because it was fun. Everybody was fun in it. So it, you could get carried away. But we always had that motto after certain things happened, comedy is a serious business, he used to say. Um, he was a great one for teaching you as well. I'll never forget, David, that he would ask you to go in front of, uh, uh, sorry, behind the camera and look at the shot that he was about to take of you. Now, there are not many directors do that. And he always did that with me and with, um, with um, Paul as well, I know. He was just a marvellous, marvellous director. And throughout the years, then you got to know what K 
camera angles melt, meant properly and you got to know exactly what he was taking. It was, it was a wonderful time, apart from all the hijinks that we had. Um, it was a learning time as well for a lot of us, mm. including myself, I have to say. And um, I loved it. And it was like coming home. The beginning of every new series was like coming home. It really, really was. Wasn't it, Pollard? It really, really it was. It was absolutely um, babo, 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 marbo, fantastico. Everything's oh, <laughs> fabulous. But I, I'll never forget we, um, uh, I mean, there were quite a few, few bloomers. I mean, the big one was when we went or almost had an accident uh, with the uh, flatbed truck going into the shallow end of the Olympic size swimming pool when we were all in the carnival uh, episode. I mean, it could have been disastrous. And how, how did but that happen? It wasn't. And David, and David actually had four cameras on it and he kept the whole sequence in, which David will tell you, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and it, 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 I mean, his brother nearly drowned in it. Um, but nobody did get hurt, and it was all kept in. The four cameras were on that scene, four, and we didn't know until it was actually done that there were four cameras on it. And uh, it, it was, he, he was just marvellous. He was a marvellous director, um, David Croft. And I think he excelled himself more in Heidi High because it, it lent itself. It, could, it was an expansive um, a, a plot, a, 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 the canvas was expansive. So he had a ball. He had a great time as a director. Wow, fantastic. And how, how exactly did the flatbread, the flatbread, the, the flatbed truck? Flatbread. How did that, <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. Um, how did it run into a, a problem exactly? Well, we, we pulled it down because it well, what actually was steps, happened? Well, was steps sorry. down. There were steps. Go on, David, you tell him. Well, we, there were steps. We we there were steps going into the pool, and we pulled this cart, and it looked ginormous when you pulled it down. Um, and it, actually, there was a restraining wire, but it was down to a single thread at the end. And David said that was the nearest he'd ever come to a, a, a tragedy. But um, it mm, was mm, a mm. big, heavy cart, and that we'd we'd given it momentum as well. So. Yeah, it was a very very frightening moment. Wow. But yeah, sounds can good. I just say that um, before that happened, I don't know which plot prot uh, sorry which um, prop man decided, but there was an actual live fire on the the truck. Do you remember that, David? I do. Absolutely. There was a live. Yeah, and I was. They decided that my part in all this shindig was going to be with a blonde wig on um, and a corset and bloomers. And I was going to be the one that the Indians had caught. And um, I was on a Chawton pole yeah. next door <laughs> to, this, to this fire that got bigger and bigger as the wind blew. So I was very pleased, actually when they decided that we were going to go into the Olympic size swimming pool, mm. because uh, that again could have been disaster, but it wasn't. So the whole problem was we hadn't rehearsed running into water with these fiberglass horses. No, we no. hadn't rehearsed that, we perhaps would have been, you know, ready for it, but uh, it was just so unexpected and the drag but, of the water just pulled you under. Yeah, but D David, I mean, he was amazing that we didn't know that there were there were four cameras on that, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't. And, we uh, didn't know that he'd put four cameras on it. <laughs> and wow. he had. You know, he was just amazing. He really, really was. Jeez. It looked good. <laughs> uh, well, Ruth, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And we, it was all need to move on. But uh, that was a really great well, memory. And I'm glad no one got hurt as well. Mm. Um, that's good. So, no, nobody got hurt. Fantastic. Uh, so it's now quiz time. So this quiz has been very kindly sent in. Uh, again, a big thank, uh, thank you and shout out to Richard Darby, who runs the Facebook fan page, Heidi High, uh, open bracket, 1980 to 1988, close bracket. Now, 
Richard will help <laughs> be helping me. That's what it's actually. That's the title of the thing. So Richard will be helping me keep score on the chat, as there's no way I could keep score and read these questions as well. So I'm going to change you guys to a gallery view so we can see all of you. So if you know the answer, you just need to make a noise uh, and be the first one to shout something out. And that's how, how we will do it. I just want to double check. Richard, are you ready on the chat? Richard Darby, are you re ready on the chat to keep score? The slight delay. Uh, let's see if he is. I'm sure he is. Um, and also, if you are watching this, you can play along as well. Please put the answers uh, into the chat if you know them. So starting with, I think he's ready. We'll see. Right, starting with question. Oh, OK, Richard doesn't run the quiz. Uh, he just posts, posts <laughs> questions and hope they were OK. OK, good. Good. He's ready. Cool. <laughs> we caught up on the lag time. So question one. Are you ready, campers? Yes. Yay! All right, right. Question one. Who was to play Joe Maplin? Arthur Lowe. No? Uh, Charlie Drake? No. No? Uh, no. It, no. It Ewan, Ewan Hooper. Charlie. Ewan Hooper played his side. No, Charlie Drake. Um, no? For a famous, really famous entertainer. Really good uh, gag writer. Harry Seacombe? No, I, Bob Monkhouse <laughs> here apparently. Monkhouse. Okay, we'll move on. Um, what was Alec Foster's job at the job at Maplin? He owned the camp. Yeah. Oh, I got Nikki Alex owned the Foster camp. I'll the... take that camp controller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was... Number three, you... according to Wikipedia, what year was Mr. Partridge born? Oh, blimey! Oh, oh about take a guess. Stab 19... it. Twenty-two. No, Nineteen oh. Older. 1907. Older. Oh, 1898. It's a year which appears in Back to Future 3. If that helps. Oh, right. Oh, I bet, I bet Leslie hated that being that old. No, okay. 1885. We'll move on. Where was Sylvia born? Oh, oh just a few years, a few days ago. <laughs> Kitchester. <laughs> Where? Ah, ah, Kitchester. Um, Kitchester, wasn't she? Uh, oh, yeah. I've got something different here. Not not so uh, big, but me. it's it's not big, but Littlehampton. Yes, hey David, yeah, you got a point. I wasn't born in Littlehampton. Chichester. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. No, that was Bill was born in Littlehampton. Oh, 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 sorry. oh Richard. Okay, oh, we'll move on. It would have been. <laughs> Richard's getting corrected. Okay, uh, what was April's job before Maplin? Hairdresser. Yes. Jeffrey, yeah. one point. Uh, how well many times done. was Julian Sykes a ABA welterweight champion? Twice. Twice. No. Nope. Five. Five. <laughs> no. Nope. Four. four. Yeah, times. four. Four. Linda, four. Um, <laughs> what was Harold Fox's job in Maplin? <laughs> He was, was a smiling viper oh, that used to come along. Oh, he was a oh yes. He seduced Peggy. Oh, no, 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 that was you and Uber. Oh, was it? The yeah. smiling viper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, but what's it? Oh no. Yeah, because he came and wanted to introduce you, didn't he? It's Gladys. Okay, Gladys. I had general manager. I'm going to move on. Um, who were Team Maplins versus the Marines? I think who was in Team Maplins? David oh. and Tony. The twins. Twins. Yeah, the twins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Spike. I didn't hear. Say yeah. it again. Yeah. Spike oh. was in it. Uh, he, was in it. Uh, yes. Squad, Spike. squad leader. Yeah, you'll get a point. I, I heard all yeah. the answers oh, yeah. separately. Um, yeah. What is the name of the Elvis impersonator? Oh, Bell. Oh, um, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky, and it wasn't Ricky. Ricky. Yeah, it was Ricky. It was, Ricky. Ricky. was it Ricky? God, I can yeah. see him now. Okay, he I'll take that. <laughs> okay, I'll take, I got a different answer, but you guys were in the show, so I'll take that. Um, which race course did Fred, uh, did Fred Quill Lee work at? Fred Quilly. Reading. Uh, Reading. Uh, no. No, he lived in Mark, didn't he? No. By the seaside. Hey, Brighton, Brighton, Brighton. 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 Yes, Brighton. Yes, Brighton. Yes, David. Yes, David. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was the name that the yellow coats hated, which was brought back? Oh, what was the name? Oh, come on, Nikki. Do you know? Linda? That's your. Uh, um. 
Pom, yay, Pom, Jeffrey. Oh, that's your bomb, yeah. yeah. Um, where did Clive <laughs> and Gladys go after Maplin's? Australia. Yeah, Australia. correct, David. Australia. Right. Yeah. What was Yvonne's job in World War II? Uh, she was one of the girl. She did all that business, what you what you call them at the um Bletchley Park. Mission control. Yeah, Bletchley Park. <laughs> code code breaker. Okay, yes. I, I had yes. nurse. I had nurse, oh. so <laughs> there we go. Nurse. Move on. Um, she was uh, an answer. Where did Spike Dixon live? Live? Yeah, where did he live? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> In April Chalet. <laughs> yeah. No, it was... It was <laughs> I'm no, sure he did. Um, it was uh, Edge Baston. Um, Edge Baston, yes, it would be. What year did Ted Bovis join Maplins? Uh, well, he was in the pilot along with Spike, so he joined, if you like, we're talking that about was his character. 40. Was that, no, it was 1945. Yeah, 45. It was 45. I'm going to skip a few uh, here. Um, what was the name oh. of the fish bar? Oh, yes, Sammy's. Sammy's fish bar? Nope. No. Oh, uh, go, oh, I know, Sammy used to go there for his bit of cod in his fillet, and he always used to get it cheap from what's in it. I can't remember. It wasn't, it wasn't sad. It was, it was happy. Yes? Happy. Happy place. Yeah. No. no. The happy fish bar. Uh, happy cod. No. Happy no. cheap. No, happy, 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 happy halibut. Happy yes, who said that? Happy yeah. halibut. Hey, hey, I'll give that to David. Hey, well, um, well, well done. Uh, what movie did April want to see on her birthday? Bambi. Only a few more. Bambi! Bambi! Bambi, yay, Bambi. Uh, and let's scroll through. What was the name of Joe Maplin's autobiography? Oh, I did it my way. How oh, I did it. I did it. Oh, I did it. I, I think I heard Jeffrey first on that one. Um, what was the Heidi High musical called? Oh, yes. Oh, no. No, the Heidi High musical, the stage musical, was actually... Oh, the one I think it was Victoria Palace. No, no, it was just Heidi High, the holiday musical. Yeah, Heidi High musical, that's all it was. Who is yeah. Peggy's unseen boss? It's Cathcart. Oh, yes, Mr. boom, Cut. David. Very quick. Um, what university was Jeffrey Fairbrother a professor? Cambridge. Cambridge. Yes, Cambridge. correct. Cambridge. Who said Cambridge first? Was that Jeffrey or Linda? Yeah, no, it's Jeffrey. He's okay, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yeah. And final question: Who replaced Mr. Partridge? Uncle Kenny Sam. Kenner. Boom, David. Hey, David. Kenny very Kenner. quick. Very quick. So once again, a big thank you to Richard Darby for those questions. Who runs the yeah, Facebook welcome. fan page? Heidi High, 1980 to 1988. Well done. Thank you, Richard. Well thank, done, you. thank you. So we're going to jump back well into done. the format. Just a couple more uh, cast members to go, sharing their memories and bloopers. And then the rest of the time uh, really is chucked over to the fans on the Q&A. So once again, if you do have a question for a cast member, uh, please do put the cast member's name in caps followed by your question. When we get to the q and I'll scroll through the questions and cherry pick the, uh, the best questions put forward to the cast. But going back to the memories, bloopers. Jeffrey, over to you. Your five minutes, if you're ready or not, starts now. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely to be here with all you guys again. It's fantastic. But I, I, I'm just going to go back and, and correct Linda. Mm -hmm. little point. When she smacked me around the face, I said, oh. it's my fault, because I said, you can't cheat a slap in the face on camera. Yes. You've just got to go for it. Yes. So yes. when we get there, I'm forgiving you now. Just go for it. Just smack yes. me the <laughs> He did. But what she didn't do was smack me around the cheek with her fingers. Oh, what did she do? Be on the cheekbone with the heel of her hand. Oh, <laughs> oh you clouted. Oh. I didn't know that yeah. now. Oh, Jeff, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, I've forgiven her. I've already forgiven her many, many. It left a bit of a bruise, Jeff. I, ne I nearly knocked um, <laughs> Nikki out last when we had the, the, the reunion. I'm vicious. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> I was seeing stars for a while. They were, oh, uh, you uh, still look gorgeous and hunky. Oh, darling, thank you. Listen, Nikki, another <laughs> one, a correction. I was not wearing a wetsuit in that pool. It yes. was the only time I couldn't wear a wetsuit because I was in as dressed as Miss Maplin. In a, <laughs> in a I <laughs> thought, you, oh, sorry, darling. I thought you had a wetsuit on. And, wig and, 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 and big eyelashes. I, was, I went in the water, and because I wasn't wearing a wetsuit, hypothermia set in. <gasps> oh, God, I'm so sorry. I thought you had a wetsuit on. <laughs> There for a long time. Jeff, yes. poor girl, in in bikini, and it was Arctic hot water. It was the middle of October. We had to set the filming of the sequence back for a couple of weeks because of. <laughs> and I went in. <laughs> in, 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 in costume, and I, I was swimming in that right. water, uh, and my legs. Read it out. Um, uh, and I shouted, David, I've got to come out, because I knew if I didn't get out, they'd have to pull me out. Oh. Uh, but you two, <laughs> you're in there in, in the room, in the, your a nightmare. We saw, actually, we saw a piece of unedited film at the end of the day of that sequence. Uh, and the poor girls were so frozen. It was just unbelievable. It was just one of those incredible moments I will never forget. One of those little episodes, you know, with Spike being a, a silly bugger, which <laughs> dressing up in all those silly things. Uh, but it was just, it was uh, just an episode I'll never forget. But one, one, one thing I do remember is because you know they used to chuck me in the pool on a regular basis. Uh, there was an episode where um, David uh, wasn't directing. John Kilby was directing, uh, 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 John Kilby directed a lot of our, our programmes. He came to me one day and he said, now this is where you go in the pool. Have you any ideas how we should do this? He was asking <laughs> how I should suggest we go into the pool sequence. So I had a little think and I thought, well, I don't really like this. If we can do one that you can't top ever again, Maybe they won't do it anymore. So I had to think. <laughs> I had to thought, well, Ruth was involved in this. And I said, why don't we do it off the top of the diving board? I go in, Ruth and I were having this little scene. She puts a custard pie in my face. I go off at a cartwheel into the water, drop the whole distance into the pool. Spectacular uh, thing. We will never top it. They'll never do it again. We did it. It was magnificent. Uh, one minute. But following the following series, they did it again. <laughs> so I did win, but, the, <laughs> but there we were. Oh, we had some wonderful times. So fantastic stuff. It was great. And look at us now. Can I just butt in here, Jeff? Sorry? Jeff, it's Ruth. Yeah. Dying. Do you remember when they all night they tried to heat up the Olympic size swimming pool because you had to go in? You and Sue had to go in the next day. Do you remember that? I do indeed. It was. Oh, well, you wanted the octopus. What did they yes. know? Were you the octopus, darling? It and was... all your ink squirted out yeah. of something, you know, private. <laughs> But do you remember they spent all night no, it was trying all... to heat up the pool for you because it was so cold. 42 degrees in old money, whatever that is now, in freezing, just 10 degrees above freezing. <laughs> it was yeah, dark, yeah. It was Arctic. Very cold. Yeah, and those are happy memories. Wow, <laughs> yeah, it re really sounds it. Thank you for that, Jeff. That was, that was great. And uh, Sue, we are now going to move on to you very quickly. Then we can move straight on to the Q&A. So, Sue, your five minutes start now. Now. OK, uh, this involved Fred Quilly, played by Felix Bones, and Spike, played by Jeff Holland, and Peggy, played by Sue Pollard. And there we were, because Fred Quilly was the jockey, and he was also in charge of all the horses that he looked after on the camp. And this particular day, a real horse came along because he was trying to get this other horse to try and, and, and sort of get to back to his jumping form and all this. Anyway, 
unbeknownst to this horse, all he could get was a horse's skin. So do you remember that, Jeff? It was hilarious. So Jeff, he was in the front of the horse and I was in the back. I thought, oh, I think I've got the wrong end of the, you know, the bad end of the stick. So anyway, then it was this real horse came and went and kept sniffing up the nose of the pretend horse. And then he came round the back and it was like, you know, it was all going fine. <laughs> and then suddenly I said to Jeff, oh, you're right. Said, yeah, yeah, everything will be fine. It'll all be fine. Anyway, suddenly this horse mounted me, dear. He thought it was the real thing. I was like, well, can you get it off? Can you get it off? And I said to him, for God's sake, don't trump Jeff, because that is the common word for party. I interrupt you because I just said, I'm going to eat grass. You brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Oh, that was no, you know, you've, you've, no, 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 darling, you've come in too early because I was, I was going to tag that. But never mind, that was good. So eventually it got off. It, it took forever and ever. And there was Bibi, um, and there was David going, this is all marvellous stuff. Because uh, uh, I mean, they didn't do anything. You couldn't use that, the mountain. So I said, can I just get out? I just couldn't wait to get out of that horse thing. But you see, David loved it, because you know, they, they're always like that, David and Jimmy. They just absolutely loved it when things went wrong. And they kept the cameras rolling just for their own amusement. But no, I remember all that. That was absolutely blooming hilarious. Oh, and I've just got to tell you one more thing. Felix, never, he couldn't stand the word action. Because he said, oh, my, my bottle's gone, my bottle's gone. So <laughs> all he could, all he could ever answer to was, Go, Felix. And then he went, didn't he? And it was fabulous. He just couldn't stand the word action. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Woody Allen going for that? I can't. <laughs> we all had good fun. It was great. Beautiful. Um, you, Sue, you're only did. halfway on your time. You, you can share something else if you like. Oh, I couldn't share. I couldn't share what happened. Oh, I can share something. Tell yeah. them. Tell them oh, that. shall I tell them? Yeah. Where we stayed. Because I like to get things done quick because people can be a bit, you know, we can all be laborious. Anyway, so there we were at the Cliff Hotel where we stayed and we had a parrot. Um, I can say that because it, we had this parrot and it was the most boring bloody parrot you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> anyway, it used to just sit on its perch and do sod all. So anyway, suddenly, it was, they always used to do afternoon tea as well. So in the afternoon tea was uh, almost in the foyer of the Cliff Hotel. It was always the clear. <coughs> well, years were there. Oh, it's it's too jolly marvellous. Isn't this absolutely fantastic? We're having such a lovely time here. <laughs> Suddenly the fire went. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to say off, but that's what it said. And um, these two ladies paid the bill and were never seen again. But I told it to swear, you see. So <laughs> that was my claim to fame about the parrot. And apparently, when we left on the last day, it was still swearing. It lived up to its name as a creature of, you know, porn and stuff. It was <laughs> Beautiful. How long did it take you, Sue, to teach it to, to say that? It took me two can seasons. We, can I just... <coughs> yeah, two seasons it took me. And then how when I kept saying, this bird, it's got to, I've got to teach it to say something that's a bit risque. And um, it was awful. And I, it, it was just hopeless. And I suddenly went, um, clear off. And he used to say clear off. And I thought, oh, good. So clear off got more and more, you know, risque. So two years and I was dead proud of him. He got himself in. <laughs> I thought, there's a good pupil of mine. Fabulous. Oh, oh fantastic. Uh, Ruth, did you have anything to add then? Yes, I'd just like to remind Jeff of the night of the hurricane. Everybody had been to a party except me. I was half past five in the, uh, the next morning in the um, makeup chair. So I had to go to bed early. And I woke up about half past one and my, um, my actual uh, bedroom was on the front of the uh, promenade in this hotel that we all stayed in. And I thought, well, everybody's bound to be up. I went downstairs. There was nobody up. They'd all gone to bed. And eventually, at about, oh, I don't know, about an hour later, I, and, and it was roaring outside the gale, absolutely roaring. Um, and no lights were on in the hotel. And Jeff, you came down. Do you remember? 
I, and you you I, actually I, I said to you I said I don't know what's going on I said but I think we're in a bit of a, a mess here eventually another man came down and he was going to go on the ferry to Harwich from Harwich to the Hook of Holland and he came down and we sat there the three of us with this gale roaring about it thinking that the cast would come down but nobody came down yeah. except <laughs> no. for myself okay. they were all sound asleep it was, yeah. a, it was the night what, darling the great hurricane of 87 of the uh, hur- uh, yes. over, yeah overnight uh, yeah. Uh, over the, uh, the the course of the evening, that most of us got up and came downstairs. If we couldn't sleep, I think your window was blown in, Ruth. My car was uh, damaged. Yes. On the front. Ken, uh, did Kenny Connor was in the bridal suite? Didn't he say he felt the the room move for the first time? He had no. Yeah. I started to help. That's what woke me up. And put the bacon on for the breakfast in the morning and sit up at six in the morning. We were all down there, and we, you know, and we all assembled because the whole thing was a, a nightmare, complete nightmare. It was a Saturday morning, and uh, and and then we we went back to the camp. We got one uh, scene to film outside around the pool, but because of the devastation, fifty-eight poplar trees came down in that camp. That yeah, night. do you remember that? Yeah. And, and do you remember the guy? Yeah. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, one of the um, technicians who nearly got it because the poplar came down into yeah. the va- into the actual yeah. chalet. Yeah. He got taken to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. It was the sound guy, wasn't it? The guy with the boom, that big. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Got yeah. Up. Got up to go down to the, the toilet at the end of the chalet lines because he was staying in the chalets. He got up to go for a pee, yeah. and when he came back, there was a. That's right. Right through his shelly. Yes. Wow. Shelly that night. Oh, awful. Somebody was after him that night, that's for sure. And it was, uh, it was quite an extraordinary experience because one of the poor extras, uh, supporting artists, I, I beg your pardon, uh, we don't use that word, uh, but it, one of the, he just changed his car insurance from fully comprehensive to third party fire and theft. Oh, and no. He came down on his car. Yeah, oh, lad. It, it was a me- the, the devastation that it caused it was God's in way. Dover Court. At the end of the day, God's way of saying hi, hi, is no more. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. Do you remember the devastation that you know as you walk out of the hotel and down the road there were, you know, um, there were roofs off. Yeah. loads of trees down and it was quite awful and, and a lot of our extras that lived in London yeah. couldn't get to the to the camp because there was so much devastation on the roads as well you know mm. but it, it was the very last mm. bit a, of filming and there was um historic event it was awful really you know to, to go out like that yeah didn't Michael Fish as well? Didn't he say uh, like there wasn't going to be a storm? There was it was yeah, going to be sunny and it was no. He said there wasn't going to be a storm. Kevin, can I just say something? Um, make it super quick because we do need to go okay, over to the fan Q and A. We've got lots just of questions back, on the chat. Going back to Pollard's teaching the parrot to say fuck off. Yes, go on. I was very very nervous when I came in with all these wonderful people coming in. You know, four years late. And I walked into the hotel with my bag, and the first thing that somebody said to me was, fuck off. And <laughs> 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 it was the parrot of Babylon. I told you Yes. It was yes, yes. And I was so nervous. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> oh. Beautiful! What a way to be uh, to be greeted. Um, I didn't actually tell you guys who won the quiz, so I, I do need to interrupt because I, I want to jump over to the fan Q and A. We've got loads of fans here. We got three hundred eighty four people uh, wow. watching this who are putting oh, questions in. I'm so uh, welcome, welcome. Go for a pee break. Oh yeah, go 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 for a pee break. So no questions for Jeff. 
for, for now. Uh, <laughs> but just to let you guys know, David won won the quiz. David Webb. Yeah, won. Uh, so well done. I think he had ten oh, points. Lord, What's the prize? What's the prize? Um, pride. Weeks old at Matlins. You can have uh, yes. a, a virtual <laughs> cup of cold mint tea. There you go. That's what you get. Uh, that's your prize. So uh, I'm now going to jump over to Q and A. So I'm going to whiz through all the questions and just see what we got. So, um, well, we had lots of guesses with the quiz. We're just seeing them now. Uh, so first queer question. Where's all the questions? Okay, Nikki. First question for Nikki. How long? Are your legs really in inches? 36 inside legs. There we go. 36 inside leg. That answers that one. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> Ruth, could you please give us a, bli a bit of Gladys? Well, yes, she was far down the road, you know. Um, Actually, I have enjoyed this. And I'm sorry I didn't know many of the questions on the quizzes, but I, I had no idea whose knees they were. And of course, Dave is much better at that sort of thing than I am. But anyway, uh, she isn't uh, dead yet, our Gladys. She's doing very well. And just to say... Where's the other one? Tomorrow... <laughs> It's a lovely day. <laughs> There's the blue. <laughs> the white cliffs of Dover. Tomorrow, just you wait and see. Master. Oh, very <laughs> well done. That was great. Um, next question for Sue. What was your favourite episode to film? Do you know, anybody oh no, no, oh darling, from Sutton in Ashfield. Oh, it's terrible. It's a terrible uh, thing to ask anybody. It, it, oh, I mean, I know you're interested in everything else, but I'm not really sure. But uh, the ones I write really with every single person in it was That's My Bum. I mean, it was fantastic because there all the yellow coats were having to stick their bums in these cutouts. And we used to get all the dialogue <laughs> from what they were saying. And then, and what was it? And Big Rick used to say, three years of Roger for this. <laughs> she was really upset. I just loved it. Everybody was in a panic and stuff. And there was the very droll uh, Mr. Fairbrother. Pies, pies, who wants a custard pie? Absolutely no feeling at all. No, that was my favourite, really. Fabulous. Lovely. Thank you, Sue. Uh, next question is for David. Uh, do you ever get recognised from being on the show? Yeah. Um, that's from uh, who's that from? That's from uh, Chris Doyle. When I'm walking down the local high street in my yellow coat, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you really? Do you really wear it? And 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 do you no, think? I, 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 what I do, I, I give talks amongst my other things that I do, and I take my yellow coat with me, so it's it gets used. But um, occasionally, people shout out, you know, Hartley High to me, so it's it's fun but tend to be local people that know me. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So you're a bit of a legend locally. A big legend locally. Big legend. <laughs> big legend. Very big um, a legend. <laughs> a legend. <laughs> oh, Sue, this is a nice question. So uh, Sue, this is from Adrian Pye. Uh, did you enjoy it when Peggy finally achieved her dream to become a yellow coat? Adrian, I cannot tell you, it's one of those fabulous moments in any show that anybody's ever done, talking way back, even in the, um, the days of the, you know, just silent movies, to convey <laughs> something that is absolutely fabulous and just, I just really was thrilled to bits. And, and when anything like that happens, if you believe in something and a character that you've got, then you really want to be that character. And all the time, you know, I desperately wanted my dream to come true. And it was the most marvellous thing in the world. And I just loved it. Yeah. So thank you for that question, Adrian. Bless you. Great. That's great. Uh, this one is from SB. This is to Linda and Jeff. Where would April and Spike be today? Oh. Uh, <laughs> divorced. Divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear about that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> 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 they, were, 
okay. Room. Who would start the divorce? Oh, well, I think Jeff, because he he really, his heart was in comedy. He wanted to work. He wanted to be a comic. And, and mm. April just wanted to settle down. And she wanted him to work in the tax office. And she wanted to be a housewife and have babies. And, and mm. I don't think that was... I mean, it's your character, Jeff. You say, um, but but I, I think that you would have left her. Definitely, yeah. I think it, I think it was mm. a disaster waiting to happen. Disaster yeah. waiting to happen. I show you something, Kevin, before we carry on. Look at her. Oh wow! <laughs> you got a hiding eye face mask. Where'd you get that from? Well, it's available online from eBay. I've got one as well. Oh, yes. Really? Yes. Yeah, sure. oh, that's lovely. Must get those. Look at that. It's got the yellow coat on it, the, yeah. little, the white shirt. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Oh, so Ricky, so Ricky and I went away in the summer. We went to call food together and we were sent those masks. And um I was asked if we they could have a photograph of us at the on the aeroplane. And so there's a good really good picture of Ricky and I yeah. with the masks on the aeroplane, just about to take off in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, great. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, next They're question great. for you, Nikki. Uh, yeah. This is from, I think it's Chitty75. In recent years, you starred in the, uh, you started in the Heidi High tour as Yvonne. Uh, how different was that tour to the original stage show, 1983 and 1984? Well, wow, that's a very well researched question. Well, mm. yeah, I mean, yeah, very well researched. Well done. Yeah, I, we, we did do a stage tour. I did it with Barry. Barry was probably one of the only other um, original members of the cast, actually. Um, we did it in 2010. And playing Yvonne Stuart Hargreaves was not nearly as much fun as playing Sylvia. <laughs> but um, I mean, bless her, Diane Holland, who played Yvonne, was, was she played it wonderfully. And actually, I didn't realise how difficult it was to play until I had to play it. But um, I enjoyed doing it. But she was a little bit waspish in comparison to Sylvia, who was outrageous. Um, yeah, you know, but Yvonne, Yvonne was great, great fun to play. And I played it with Barry, so I was playing Yvonne to Barry, Barry Stuart Hargreaves, um, um, yeah, Barry. To, to, I, to, yeah. I went to see it, and she was wonderful. It was a great show, actually. Oh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, uh, this one is to all the cast. Let me change to gallery for you. Get you all on. So, would you consider doing a one-off Heidi High episode? as you are now, as your characters. So like a, a, a comeback episode. And you know, this, this reunion has got like a bit of a buzz. We got like a bit of press. I think Daily ML might do a bit on it. Who knows? So if you know, one of the writers at the BBC kind of thought, oh yeah, maybe we could do a, a, some kind of reunion or reboot, would you guys be up for it? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> that kills that. <laughs> There's not any question of, if you see, when you start to reboot stuff, you've only got, and even if it's just a one-off, it's always going to be disappointing. Yeah. People want, want it yeah. to happen, but deep down, they'd be disappointed because it wasn't what they remembered. Nobody's the same. It's all of it. <laughs> and it would be excruciatingly, oh, naff. Better to just go and say, besides they've got the box sets, they've got everything else. We don't need to go back and, and just think, oh, well, that wasn't very good, was it? The audience thinking... Bloody yeah. Well, that's my personal view, to be fair. That's all. And uh, uh, Jimmy's, I, not, Jimmy's not with us anymore. I mean, it would have to be Jimmy writing it, wouldn't it? And, and Jimmy's not there. Exactly. And, and they're not Yeah. But on the yeah. other hand, I, I yeah. truly believe that you should never look back. Yeah. And I, I think Sue's absolutely right that um, it would be totally wrong when they tried it with are you being served, it didn't work. No. And um, it won't work with Heidi High. Put new people in it, by all means. Listen, but, you listen, know, listen, I don't want listen, to go back to playing Gladys, like you know. Talking about it, this is the way to do it. We can't recreate it because Jimmy and no. David aren't. No, exactly. No. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's Too lovely to reminisce. Too many have gone. Sadly. It's lovely yeah. to reminisce about it. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, right, so let's uh, move on then to the next question. This one from, uh, is it Lai? Lai Discro? Uh, to all cast, who do you think was the better entertainment's manager? Ooh. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's a toughie. I'll go to gallery again. There we go. 
I'll tell you what, I, my opinion is they were so both so different. Oh, well, yeah, well said. Very different. Simon Cadell was an absolute genius as, as Jeffrey Fairbrother. It was pu pure magic what he used to come out with. It was so understated and brilliantly performed. And it was di so difficult for Ruth as Gladys when we had Clive um, Dempster come in and do this. That was um, David was, Griffin. Uh, David came and played Clive David Dempster. Griffin. It turned Ruth's character as Gladys on its head because in the, in the first four years, she'd been doing all the flirting. And in the, in the second four years, she was doing all the fending off because David, yeah. David Griffin, Clive was coming on doing all the flirting. She ended up marrying him at the end of it, but that doesn't matter. But the thing is, she, it turned Ruth's character on its head, but the show survived. Yeah. I think sure. hats off to David Griffin because I think he did a wonderful job. Had hard I thought he was work, great. You know. A very, very different actor, okay. um, having played opposite both of them. Um, I, I agree. I agree with you, Jeff. Um, I played with what was on the script. Yeah. So it wasn't hard. Yeah. Um, you played what was there on yeah. the script. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't query it. You just did it. And um, I found, obviously, so with Simon going, I knew in the first series that he was, go when he was going to go. I told nobody because I was asked not to say, say by him. I don't think he'd even told Jimmy and David when he was going, but I knew. And it didn't faze me because I knew that the writers, Jimmy and David, would accommodate it. And I did what was on the paper. And that's I what think I did. we all had to and know, it didn't worked. We? Worked perfectly. But Dali? Yeah. Yeah, it worked perfectly. And that's what I did. I think I suppose we all had to adapt to that. And then, yeah, we, I don't think any of, of us. Did. But we did. But what I'm saying is, I don't think any of us were ever detrimental in any way to oh god this is so difficult having somebody different now and it's all a bit that can become very no. well David and Jimmy no. wouldn't have that absolutely they, not. they tried to accommodate no. him as they had to accommodate they had to accommodate us you know David was very very yes, absolutely they were marvelous we'd all, they, yeah we we knew all your been strengths as, mm. but that was it but yeah, they so knew they your did. strengths yeah as a exactly. former yeah, yeah. They'd done that already. They'd absorbed it and, you know, it was just natural to them yeah. when they did these uh, characters for you. And it was great. Mm. It was absolutely great. I mean, I enjoyed working with both of them. I did. I, I learned I, I an awful work. lot <laughs> from Simon Fidel because he was, he was a great technician. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'd learned an awful lot. A hell of a lot, in fact. What with him and David, and David taking you behind the camera and saying, now this is the shot I'm going to do. It's a mid shot or whatever, or a long shot or yeah. a close up. You know, it was just a halcyon times. It really, really was. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to move on to the, to the next question, guys. Uh, next one is from Jake Smith or Jake Smythe. Uh, this is to all the cast. What was the filming schedule like? How long did it take to film a series in studio and on location? That, that's a lot to answer. Come and do it in a nutshell. Each person's got their own. It was extremely very well organised. Each episode, especially the filming, it had a different colour episode on the script. One week was pink, another episode was blue. So what I'm saying is you knew exactly what you were doing, when you were asked to be in what scene, what time you were called. And there was no very, very, um, there was no variance from that, unless of course it rained and they had to redo something. So you were in safe hands all the way. I, I certainly believe that you were costume first, then you were made up. Then it was like, okay, get ready for rehearsal on set. It was all a well oiled machine from what I can gather. Lunch was always about one o'clock. You broke the tea about four. So what I'm, what I'm saying is it was, nothing was left to chance. It was incredibly well organized. And we really felt that all we had to do was get on with our job, learn our lives, do the best, best we could that day. And then go home and go out and have something to eat. It was marvelous. And the, cater the catering was superb, wasn't it? The series 
those Six. broken butties in the morning. Was yeah. with all the filming was done, all the exteriors were done at the holiday camp. First of all, in the first three weeks of our yeah. engagement, and then we went back to London and did every, an episode a week for the next six or seven weeks. And we rehearsed all week for the studio. And then and on Friday, when we went into the studio, we did all the scenes in order and they played in all the filmed uh, scenes that we'd pre recorded in sequence so that the studio audience saw the whole thing going and slotting into place. And we had all their laughter on, on uh, film as well. So it was beautifully organized, brilliantly. Okay, great, cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Can I'm gonna move on to the next question, guys. Can I, can I just uh, this... quickly, can I, oh, yeah, Nikki, can I yeah. Quickly? I have to go, everybody. I'm really sorry. I've got another Zoom call coming in, in three minutes. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much, everybody. Fabulous well, to see you. you. Love you, love you, Jeff, love you, Linda. Thanks, Nikki, take care. Stay safe, darling heart. See you soon. Thanks, all right. Cheers, Nikki. Take care. Be safe. Be safe. Talk okay, soon. God so, bless love. Don't spill, Berg, to wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next question from Andrew Biggs. Um, so who's got a great memory of working with Jimmy Perry? Jimmy Me? Perry, anyone? Oh, yeah. Linda. Oh, Very quick. Oh, I've always got, no. I, yes, but Polly. Oh, Oh no, well he was just, the, he's just the business. He was just the nicest, most professional. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I adored Jimmy. He was like the, everybody's second dad, wasn't he, Polly? He loved, he adored yeah. you. But he, he, he watched, he was, let me tell you that he watched every single person, every single actor, he used to watch him watching. And he watched everybody's mannerisms and he put their personality into their, um, it, into their, the, the, their, their scenes and their script. And he was just, wasn't he? A genius. Oh, God bless him. I had to laugh oh, though, because, um, sorry, Don, just to say, when he when we were on, um, when we were doing the filming, the actually, not the filming in the studio, the OB filming, there we were, and Jimmy was trying mm -mm. desperately to save fit. I mean, he was still a gorgeous looking bloke, even when he died at 90, oh, God love him, you know. Anyway, he used to walk, he'd run his blooming legs off all the way around, you know, the actual camp area and coming back and by the sea. And then he'd come back and he'd go. And I said, I'm just going now then, darling, for the filming. me. I said, oh, you all right? He said, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you. <laughs> I mean, he was absolutely bloody knackered, poor son. But it didn't really matter. He still did it. And he was the most handsome man and very sensitive and cried a lot only because he was um, just sentimental. And uh, one of my favourite men in the entire world, I have to say. Yeah. It's interesting that Jimmy and David were both totally different characters, weren't they? Their personalities yeah. were different. Yeah. Jimmy was more showbiz, water rats and all that kind of stuff. And David was much quieter, introverted yeah. person. Yes. Which what is why they, they worked so well Absolutely. together, wasn't it? Mm. Um, Can I say? It's only fair. It's, thank you, Linda, for saying that, and David, because obviously I know the question was, did we have any nice memories of Jimmy? Well, of course we did. But, and I think we'll all be in agreement here that, you know, he couldn't have done it without David and vice versa. So David yeah. was just as tremendous as Jimmy was. So yeah. I just wanted well, to say well that said, straight a bit. Absolutely mm. well said. Together they were, they were magic and like. So, magic. ladies, and gentlemen. To the left, um, I, I had worked with um, uh, Jimmy when yes. he was actor manager up yes. at Watford Rep. I was 21 and he was just about to leave Watford. It was going to go civic, one of the first um, reps that went civic, i.e. it was going to be funded by the local authorities, right? David, um, Jimmy, um, was a man that only understood the business, show business. So he decided to leave. There was a party um, on his leaving, and I met a gentleman there called David Croft and his wife, Anne Croft, who was at this particular point uh, an agent in the West End. Well, let me... Go on a bit now. I always kept in touch with Jimmy. Um, I'd done Principal Boy for him for about four years running and done various musicals and a few plays. 
And um, he did say to me, I'm going to write this Dad's Army. And he used to actually tell us about it. And it was great. I said, oh, that, that's very good, Jim. Yeah, yeah, you, that, that sounds like it might work. You know, nobody's ever done um, a sitcom about um, the, um, the army, the civilian army during the war. So anyway, let's travel on a bit. Um, we're talking now of 19, that was, that was 20 years previous to 1979 right. and he phoned me sorry 1979 79. and he, right. he phoned me and he said um, Ruth I've got a part for you and I said in what he said well I'm going to write a new series oh are you I said um well that's good um, will you come up and see David Croft? Well, I remembered meeting this guy at this party, David Croft. And of course, he produced also Dad's Army and Ain't Half Hot. Um, I thought, God, that's, that's amazing. So up I go to his um, uh, flat in, in uh, Westminster. Westminster. Mm. And um, I get the part. Pardon? Westminster. Did you say something, David? Yeah, it's Westminster. Those high yes, steps, Westminster. Those steps, steps up That's the top right. The That's right, the top, the top flat. And they used to climb up it. There was about six, six stories to go to get up oh. to this flat. Oh, 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 anyway, yeah. um, I got the part um, and it was marvellous. But I nearly didn't get the part because they were contemplating putting in... Um, Windsor Davis, because he'd done so well in Ain't Half Hot, they were contemplating putting him into High D High. And then they decided at the last minute that they wanted a woman to do it. And they wanted a Welsh woman to do it. And the only one that they knew was me. So <laughs> that's how I got it. <laughs> that, that actually leads me, Ruth, on, that, quite nicely into my next question, which is from Ben Stock. Um, and it's to uh, anyone really um, and if you could have played any other part in a David Croft sitcom that you didn't play what would it have been? Oh. Mrs Slocum! <laughs> Mrs Slocum. Oh, you great. Yeah, you I did loved great. Her. I loved her because she was just my sort of human. I loved it when yeah. she kept talking about her pussy. Pussy, you, you could have padded out, you'd have been brilliant at that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just uh, loved her because you know why? It, she might have been caricatural. I think yeah. I just made that up. But that didn't matter because uh, David's stuff was always almost bordering on fast. So it yeah. wouldn't have mattered. It was just, but that's my personal view. I don't know what you think, Linda. What would you like to have played somewhere? I'd like to have gone into You Rang Me Lord and played Poppy. Oh, oh yeah. I wanted to, oh. I would have liked to have done that. And, uh, do oh, you all have us in that? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. I'd like to have played June. I'd like to Caps, play. I'd have liked to play June Whitfield's part uh, when she played opposite Terry Scott, and that was produced by Jimmy. Uh, no, by, by David Croft. Uh, Do you remember that one? What, what? June yeah. and I. If I, I'm <laughs> much older than you lot. <laughs> I, I would like to have played Pike in Dad's Army because think oh. of all the repeats. Yes. But you know what, though, David? Because I saw Ian. Oh, you know how you do you bump into each other, you know, not down the street, but somewhere. And God, he looks just like you, I'd say. Fantastic. Yeah. Because you've always been handsome, just like <laughs> Ian, really, because you've got the same sort of face and the same hair colouring. Yeah, you'd have been fantastic. All these repeats, you could have had four conservatories <laughs> by now, three horses. <laughs> Great, yeah. Do you remember at a reunion, we had a reunion at Dover Court, and uh, one was convinced that I'd been singing at her, uh, her home, a, a social club. And it was your brother Tony. That, yeah. Uh, and I, I, <laughs> you're, the third, you're the third twin. You're the third yeah. twin. No, it was you. I said, no, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> convinced. Oh, I'd, yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be third web twin. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. Oh, 
Anyway, Ben, this is just a question by Kevin. We've just, because we know Ben, he's fabulous. He's very, very Mr. Showbiz himself. And he just did a fantastic sold out concert, I believe somewhere near Waterloo Station. Wow. Sorry I couldn't go, but I heard it was terrific That's and right. great. And it's really, really nice to sort of just say hello to you, darling. And God bless you. And hopefully we'll see each other when, uh, we, when we all can. Cool, big up Thank to you. Ben. Cool, thanks, Ben. Uh, next question from Tim Wells. Um, any stories about Paul? Oh, Paul, Paul Shane. Paul Shane, yeah. One of the um, nicest, nicest guys in the business. <laughs> yeah, I've got one. At, at, at the time when um, we all started, we were all starting, and I think, you know, it was amazing. We were on about five pounds a week. I mean, all of us, not necessarily as low as that, but, you know, we never had much money. And he was the bank. Shaney was the bank. And on a Wednesday, I remember going and saying, oh, Paulie, you couldn't do me a favour, could you? I'm a bit brassic. And do you mind? I'll pay you back when we get paid next week. And do you know what? He always did. He was earning a grand sum of about five, six hundred pounds a week 40 years ago. Obviously, yes, he was. big in the clubs, you know. So he was the most marvellous book in that respect. And he's a lovely family man. And God, we laughed. I mean, it was just, and I remember just going back to the pilot, there was myself, Ruth and Paul, and we stood, we sat at the edge of the bed in the chalet doing the film because it was the real chalet. Oh, thank God, when we got to the studio, it was a replication. But we sat there, absolutely perished. And he said, yeah, we'd finished the filming. And I must stress this because nobody ever had any drinks. So there we were at the end and we just went and he had little thimbles full of whiskey. And he just said to us, he said, well, kids, me and Ruth and that. And he said, do you think we did all right? I said, I don't know, darling. We've just got to hope for the best. And he went, well, here's to us then, girls. And everybody, God bless, down the hatch. Oh, and, that's um, lovely. Right. We did, the three of us. I remember that, Paul. Yeah. yeah. It was I remember expensive. also borrowing money off him. Yeah. And you think it's little things like that, yeah, when you're all in it together, definitely. you know, we'd only done the pilot, we hadn't any idea. I mean, even though the crew laughed, you can't always say that. That's an old wives' tale, in my view, sometimes, all the crew laugh, it, it's all right. But I just never like to believe anything until you get the proof is in the pudding. And um, so it was lovely to know that we were all there at that lovely moment. And then, and then of course, we got on in, in, in all of us and it went to better things. So thank you, Shaney. I'm, oh, I'm toasting you in my Highland Spring sparkling water. Can I, can I, <laughs> <laughs> I just say, um, the first day I ever met may it. I just say about uh, yeah. Paul Shane? Place. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was I was cast as Spike uh, quite early on, and uh, they called me down to London to uh, meet him at the acting rehearsal rooms to read. So he was one of several actors they called in to read for Ted. Mm. Uh, uh, they got him into the rehearsal room and then it, they chatted to him, Jimmy and David, and then they called me in to join him to read a couple of scenes. Uh, and I walked into the room and he was standing right in the middle of the floor, this enormous room. And I walked over to him, I put my hand out and I said, hello, Paul, and it's lovely to meet you. Uh, and he said, lovely to meet you too. And he looked at me and he sort of said, have we met before? And I said, no, because I'd have remembered. And he sensed it in that moment, as I did, that the chemistry was just there, just like that. It was there in between the two of us. And, uh, you know, and it, we sensed it. We just had something together. Uh, and it, I, I think it showed obviously over the years that we worked together it showed in the work we did but there was a chemistry between us on that instant moment that we first met uh, and he, you know I've never forgotten that moment and I never will it was lovely to work with that man that's, that's beautiful I'll, I'll chuck it over to uh, Ruth uh, over to Ruth Kevin. yeah Ruth yes um, well um, actually Paul was our best man my husband's best man when we got married oh, wow. um, about 1983. Um, and um, uh, we used to go on holiday together. Uh, and we used to go to the Algarve period because that was the 
place where you could get some sun, you know, straight after pantomime. I mean, we invariably did pantomime together, um, Paul and I, and we became very, very firm friends. Um, and when he passed away, when Dory passed away, his wife, it was so sad. Uh, and I felt as though the nucleus of the cast had gone because there was no doubt about it. His character was the nucleus yeah. of us lot, the, the entertainment uh, lot. We, it, it, he was the nucleus of us. And uh, it was very, very sad. And mm. I miss him yeah. to this day. Oh, now come on, now come on, all the happy, happy stuff. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, got, no, a, I, I've got a Shane story if you want one. Yeah, uh, go yeah on. but I just really want to acknowledge, acknowledge Ruth. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ruth. I, I can really tell mm -hmm. that's a very intimate uh, moment. And I really appreciate that you, you, you shared that with us and, and all the fans watching. So I really thank you for that. Um, over to you, Linda. Uh, it, it, I did a play with him called, I don't know if I'm, I'm sure you will know, The Mating Game. Um, and I played, I think she's called Julia or Junior, I can't remember the character, but she's the very version of um, Secretarial one. And um, Shane was playing the comedy, you know, the big comedy part. I'm sure you know the thing. Um, and we, we were on stage and it was the first night. So we were all nervous anyway. And I was kind of wandering around the stage uh, d doing the play and I could feel something in my back like tickling and I was sort of like I had a <laughs> and I suddenly realized I had a spider that had been a spider that crawled into my costume while I was getting changed and I was like that the whole time oh, wow. looking at me and I said to him quietly I said this is the first night of the play I said I think I've got a spider down my dress <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of the play, when I'm supposed to be kind of very dressed up and virginal, Shaney pulled the right. and pulled the spider out. Yes. Um, it, so the whole, it was, I mean, it sort of ruined, but he, he saved my life then because there was a spider crawling up my back and he just pulled my zip down, grabbed hold of it and got the spider and went, right, that's it, now we can carry on. Oh, um, oh, oh awful. awful. And, oh. And, and I just finally like to say, it, it, he said to me one night, Jeffrey Holland is, is one of the nicest people in the whole world and I love him dearly. He's my best, best mate. Wow. Well, big acknowledgement to you there, Jeff. There we go. I can remember we went to, when we did the um, stage show at Bournemouth, do you remember the guys? And, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Paul it was suddenly, you know, got a few bombs in his pocket and he, he bought a brand new Jag, didn't he? Remember that? Oh, oh that, new Jaguar. that's right. And the, yeah. regis the registration <laughs> number stuck with me. It was A47GEL. And why I remember that, I just don't know. But I remember the car very well. And he was a bit <laughs> not. They, they didn't give him a bottle of champagne when he bought it. <laughs> just a minute. Is he earning more than me? <laughs> <laughs> he earned more than all of us. But, you know, the most extraordinary thing about him was that he never, I mean, he lent money when we were short and we were, I mean, Pollard and I, I was definitely short. I mean, I was the only woman in the cast that had a family to look after. Um, mm. I had children at home to, and that's why I was partly doing the job. I'll be quite honest with you, because um, let's be honest about these things. I had to work because um, I had children to look after. And I remember I didn't have much money at the pilot and he was there. Here we are, Bruce, he said, pay me back when you can. Oh. And I just thought that was amazing of him. So kind, yeah. kind man, you know. Yeah, he understood. Well, it's always nice to have kindness in showbiz. Sometimes the people aren't kind enough and, um, this should be. I think kindness in general in life, if you can be, is marvellous, especially in the recent times now. Everybody needs a little bit of that. And, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do. You might just say hello to somebody who feels as if they're a bit lonely. So I just think that's what we had between us. We were always kind to I each other. I think so. 
Hmm. And it was a family, so it was a family. Yeah. Yeah. that we have I think that's what came across as well so many people I don't know about the ladies and gentlemen that have joined us tonight I, I always think it's nice that, that um, we, we've always had that said about us on the show always oh, do you all get on do you still see each other because we hope you do we hope you, you're as nice to each other uh, off stage as you are on because that's why we tune in because we we just like you guys in it so yeah isn't that nice well we work Mm. Yeah. It, uh, it was Jeff, a family. And do you remember? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Kevin. I was just going to say, you know, we're all in this together, and yeah. it was it was a, a real team. It was an absolute team. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Like family, family together, and we, you know, we all got on together. And in if fact, you and I had some time together last Christmas, didn't we, darling? We had a oh, we did. <laughs> it was fabulous. I loved it. I was the wicked queen yeah. and Jeff was the fabulous. Ah, he was the Alderman Fitzwarren. And he had this incredibly big song. Do you it's remember that? It, it, it had so many lyrics in it, Dave. Eh? I don't know why you remembered it. I mean, I just would have just gone, bloody yeah. hell. But you were great. You never faltered at all. That's the pro, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. Uh, so uh, uh, next uh, up, I've had uh, lots of questions about uh, Kenneth Connor. So any uh, uh, really good memories of Kenneth Connor? Oh, Ken Kenneth Connor was a joy. He was yeah. an absolute joy to work with um, because he was of the old school again, which is what Jimmy Perry and David Croft wanted. Because remember, this was set in 1959. Um, so we'd all been through the war, supposedly. Um, the second, uh, not the Boer War, the Second World War, <laughs> and um, he wanted he, when he brought somebody in to um, take over a part or augment a part. Um, they all had form, as it were, in the business. And Ken was just wonderful, wasn't he? You know, he really was. Yeah. Um, and do you remember the other guy um, that played? Um, the, the waiter in the Tratatatoria. Graham Stark, wasn't it? Yeah, Graham Stark, yeah. 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 Graham Starkey. <coughs> Graham Starkey? Graham no, Stark. Graham Stark. I remember he said on um, one of the episodes when you had all that spaghetti galore, I just got upset. I loved it when he said, <laughs> Ah, you were sworn to secrecy because you've been for the third time for this pile of spaghetti. And I just loved it when <laughs> Graham right. coming. Ah, oh, Mr. Pug, I have not seen you since the last time I've seen you. I just remember some of these lines that come out. I loved it. They were all fabulous. We were dead looking. He, no, there again. Lee Connor came in. There again, he, he was a, a great, he had great form in the business. My Uncle Sammy, no. one episode, he, he was just a guest artist in one episode. Mm. He was doing a turn on the beach, entertaining children on the beach. And, and we, Paul Shane and I, with David, watched him from the front of the Cliff Hotel down on the beach in front of the, where, where we were doing it. And we said, David, you've got to get him into the show. You've got to get him in. And we eventually, we talked him round into booking Kenny for the entire rest of the series. So I, for, and then my, I would be a huge fan of Kenneth Connor. I was one of the funniest men I've ever seen on screen. Oh, yeah. First time I ever met him, I ended up scrubbing his back in a bath. <laughs> a bath scene, a bath scene where he got this dirty old man, Uncle Sammy. He was grubby and vile. And Paul Shane and I had to put him in a bath and scrub him clean. So that's the first time I ever encountered Kenneth Connor was scrubbing his bath in a back in a bath. <laughs> Never. <laughs> he was kind too. Very kind man. It was lovely. Yeah. It was lovely. But, um, I mean, Leslie Dwyer, yeah. you, when you're talking about, you know, somebody with form in the business, I mean, Leslie Dwyer was in The Cruel Sea with, with um, Noel Coward. Or, no, in which we served, sorry, in which we served. Yeah, and, you know, he, he had such form as an actor. Leslie Dwyer. Sorry? Leslie Dwyer was actually on the bill with Mari Lloyd in 1910. That's right. He yeah. was, but he was a boy comedian. Yes. His father was Johnny Dwyer, yeah. singing, yes. 
double act, clap of Andrea, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's right. Yes, on the bill with Mari Lloyd, ninety ten. Oh. Amazing. I mean, that's incredible. We were really lucky because, as I say, once again, we started all together, mostly, sometimes singly, having worked with David and Jimmy, and then and came together for this particular Heidi High series. And, of course, all the guest artists, because going right back from David and Jimmy's early days as well, when David was on the halls and his mum was um, a singer and so was he, he was a little boy actor and stuff. So when you think how privileged we were to actually work with the people that had already had a terrific career as well. So it was marvellous for us to go, wow, well, I thought I'd be working with so-and-so. You know how you're doing, it's marvellous. I don't think you should ever lose that enthusiasm, really. It's when you get a bit cynical that it can be, oh, I've worked with him, I've worked with her, I've worked with him. How nice it is to think, oh, I'm so <laughs> grateful and glad to work with him. Do you know what I'm saying, though? We've had of times we've been very lucky yeah we have totally we've seen the, we've seen it was the a great series <laughs> we've seen the best of it spike <laughs> yes. oh yeah well <laughs> it would have been nice if people said that about us and said you'll never guess we did oh years ago i did um panto with jeff holland and oh and you, you would it be nice to think that you know you passed the baton on do you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes yes that's what I think. That's nice. Beautiful. Mm. Cool. So uh, moving on to the next question. This one is from <laughs> Louise Evans. A uh, bit more of a generic question, this one. So um, does anyone have any superstitions? I'm, I'm kind of guessing maybe superstitions about performing or going on stage. Any what? Superstitions. Superstitions. Super right. uh, well, most of the theatrical superstitions that we are... We, we, uh, brought up with, particularly whistling in the dressing room. In the, uh, it's forbidden to whistle in the dressing room. If you are, you're sent out and knock the door three times, turn around three times, knock the door, ask them back in. But whistling in the, in the uh, dressing room, it's all because in the old days, in, the, in way back in Georgian times, before communication uh, was invented, cues were given by whistles, <laughs> you know, and they bring flies in, they'd come in, the scenery would be moved by whistling cues. And of course, it was supposed to be unlucky, because if you got in the way of a, <laughs> a cloth coming in, you get it battered on your head. You know, <laughs> killed by all these silly things, and whistling became a superstition. And knitting in the wings is another one, which is supposed to be for Yeah, knitting. Knitting in the wings. But there are various schools of thought about this, one of them is the, the clickety clickety clack of the needles going, put the actors off because they could hear it um, mm. off their dial. But the, on the other hand, apparently there was one uh, ballet company that was working and there was a, a dresser sitting in the wings knitting. And this boy dancer came off doing his uh, dancing plies and, and what, party whatevers into the wings and impaled himself on a knitting <laughs> Poor devil. We'll we'll go and say he could have punctured himself or something. I think we've all got personal superstitions. I don't know what you guys, but I think we all have. Well, I wouldn't. I can't speak for everyone, of course, but I think you feel if you don't do things in order, if you don't, um, you know, like put your makeup on in the same way, the same time, put your, you know, your powder and everything else and how you do this, and then you put your costume on, and then you might go and do a few um, warm-up exercises. Maybe down, I usually go down uh, down into the crew rooms and stuff, if there's any room. And uh, so I think we... I think we probably all have our own little superstitions because then I think you've all got to put the, put the right show on first. Oh, that's no good. I'm going to be terrible tonight. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, you know, the same routine gives you a bit of confidence. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's mine. I don't know if anybody else has got any. I always put my left sock on before I put my right sock on. And I'm yeah. not happy. I don't know why I do that, but I do. It's just, I know, it's just weird. What do you think, I'm David? What do you think? I'm, not, I'm not superstitious at all, but I do respect the superstition. I wouldn't. I would never have whistled in the dressing room because... I knew it was not the thing to, to do in a, in a theatre, um, but I'm not generally superstitious, so <laughs> I respect those that do have superstitions. Okay, yeah. let's let's get back to the show. I've got another question here. Uh, it's, it's popped up a few times as well. Uh, uh, I'll credit this one to Topaz, 
Topaz Penguin. Um, do you have a favourite quote from the show? Quote? Yeah. Yeah, we've seen the best of it, Spike. I think that's yeah. comedy. That was the last one, wasn't it? That the final scene when when uh, Ted's um, sitting by the swimming pool and everybody's getting ready to leave the camp for the final mm -hmm. time, and Spike walks up to him and and uh, Ted's sitting on his suitcase and said, "We've seen the best of it, Spike," and I think that summed it up beautifully. He wasn't acting that day, Paul. He was not acting. Oh bless. <laughs> no, I'll never. Do you remember the last time we sang "Goodnight Campus"? Oh yes. In the ballroom. Yes. And we were absolutely in sh bits, all of us. Probably. We yes. You know, we really were. Yeah, it was very sad. I, I remember. It's a beautiful, wonderful eight years. Lyndon mm. hasn't spoken for six pages. Come on, darling, speak. Mm. You look like you wanted to speak. Oh, oh, yeah, Linda did. Yeah, go on. Oh, yes, no, I was just going to say, um, I, uh, my memories of Felix's lines. Um, do you remember when he couldn't say, here we all are? He kept here saying, we here we are all. all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, yeah. and then he kept saying, um, he had a, that line, I'm an orphan. <laughs> and he kept, he could only say, I am. And he couldn't, and he kept saying, what, 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 what? And I just said, what, what, what do you do? For it? What, what, why is it? What do you do really, um, Felix? He said, I'm a comedian. And I said, well, that just replace the word comedian with orphan. And he still, you know, it was, I am an orphan. And here we, here we, <laughs> oh, and it was on the t-shirts at the end party, wasn't it? His, his yeah. all his lines. God bless yeah. him. He was such a lovely. Yes, bless him. He was special, wasn't he, Felix? Everybody loved him. Everybody yeah. knew him at Television Centre. Everybody, he's just a great guy. And everybody yeah. knew it because he'd done all the warm-ups warm for all the other, uh, all the other shows that were there. You know, he, he was a great warm-up man. And who he really did was. This is your um, life. Do you remember your life, Felix? What a what a night that was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? The, the wonderful uh, sweaters that we used to have. Mm. Sometimes blue, sometimes yellow. You know, those um, uh, yeah. fleecy sort of ones. Well, mm. I've still got the one. I've never worn it. I'm waiting that somebody might want it for a, a charity. Um, comedy is a serious business. We always had a quote, mm. do you remember? Mm. And for me, comedy mm. is a serious business. It's, Always reminds me of Jimmy and David <laughs> trying to control well, us, especially I have to say, sorry, Go on. Uh, uh, especially um, uh, Simon Cadell because he was mischievous. Yeah, Simon had a, 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 a limp in him, you know. And when he used to get going, he, you know, he was funny. He really was very, very subtle. <laughs> What, I used to what just kind love of mischievous things did he do? Sorry, Kevin. So what? what what kind of mischievous things did he do? Well, on the stage show, <laughs> now it sounds ridiculous, but we used to have to come um, on the stage show, the musical, and um, I used to, Gladys used to have to meet Jeffrey as though they were going to get married at the very end. Good night, mm. camp as it was. See you in the morning. Uh -huh. All he did one night was put on his upstage ear so nobody could see it, a great big earring. That's the sort of thing he did. <laughs> yeah. and, course, you know, it was ridiculous and funny. And of course, as he went down the line, because everybody else was lined up and we were in the front going to meet, we're going, you know, because it was just just so subtle. It was. A great big earring he'd got from somewhere. The audience <laughs> couldn't see it, but we all could on stage. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I love it. Um, Sue, sorry, I, th I think you were about he to was, say something yeah, when, was I, great. when I jumped in. No, just my favourite thing was him always. That, that The line, I mean, it, one of his, um, it was hopeless. When he used to read a, a, a Joe Mucklin's letters out, you know, because Joe Mucklin was his grammar was sadly lacking, you know, and somebody like um, Simon's character. But I also like, I also loved it when it was um, when Paul said, "Right, come on then, Ted, come on then, Jeff, it's time for you to say something now. We're going to the Olympic-sized pool. Come on, 
get on there and say something. So he said, live and everybody. <laughs> I loved it when he went, pies, pies, who wants a custard pie? <laughs> And then I just loved it when she said, oh, get it off. I do it. But it was so lovely. And I just loved it when he said, pies, pies, I was watching watching when when Simon did one of those awful Jeffrey Fairbrother moments at the microphone when he said, um, hello, campus, Heidi, hi. And then go, oh, dear. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It didn't generate any enthusiasm at all. And he's going, give me strength, you know. Yeah. There was a, I was standing at the back of the camp with some punters who turned up from the street to watch this filming going on. And that's right. And saying this, <laughs> lady, hi. Yeah. You know, and this woman turned to me, literally, she turned to me for real and she said, dreadful, and walked off. <laughs> Dreadful. Oh, I just so love that, don't you? And sometimes, you know, you'd be doing something. It wasn't necessarily a terminology of anything, but somebody, you see, you get the, the members of the public that didn't know. It's not their fault, you know. Well, people used to come right through the shops sometimes. Uh, cuts. Yeah. Imagine, you must oh, understand yes. they're filming here. Oh, sorry. I'm ever so sorry, dog. You know, <laughs> they have this shopping bag and stuff, you know. But I think they were so thrilled because they wanted to be in it, you know. But oh, the public were great, though, weren't they? They've all been great, actually. Great supporters of us all. Great. I, I got a question here from Luke, which might be a good cue for David to uh, show something on camera. Uh, well, that I know he has. Uh, so, Luke Robbins, did you ever get to keep any costumes or props from the show, David? There you go. Oh, fabulous! Um, it doesn't fit anymore, sadly. But there it is. <laughs> that's, the, that's the very, very coat. Of course, it's modelled on the Butlins um, coat. And uh, when Tony and I used to do um, cabaret at the different Butlins camps or hotels, the red coats would always ask if they could put the yellow coat on and have their photographs taken with it. But of course, um, oh. they were forbidden to say Heidi High, weren't they, at the camps? It became a bit yeah. of a None thing to do, but uh, yeah, there's your answer. I've kept this. I'm, I'm looking after it actually for the BBC. Um, I've got the old milk monitor badges here, the different things. So happy memories, and I wouldn't part with that for the world. It's still. Uh, I was only talking the other day to somebody uh, about uh, when we started the show, uh, and David Croft actually approached Butlins. Yes. See if we could if we could film either at Filey or Clacton, one of those yes. earliest holiday camps and Robert Butlin who was then in charge apparently went mental and said absolutely no way sorry but we've spent over 20 years more and millions and millions of pounds on yeah. our image and we don't want like- denigrating because the, he missed the point completely he missed the point because Heidi yeah. High was set in 1959 and it, it, it was it was history that we were talking about as it was before his time. And the BBC and Butlins could have been the best of friends because of the results of that silly misunderstanding, you know, Butlins and Pontins both refused to allow their blue coats and red coats respectively to shout Heidi High and Hody Ho. And if they did, they get sacked. It was such a, a, a silly nonsense, a bit of misunderstanding. You know, it should, it should never have happened. Just what, what I find quite strange about that, Jeffrey, is that I, I used to go to like a lot of holiday camps as a kid, and, and there are some things that you kind of mentioned that, that happened in the show that I remember as a kid yeah. um, from going to Pontins, like uh, Good Night Campers. Yeah. Or I remember they sang that song towards yeah. the end of the night for the kids, and that was the cue for the kids to bugger off to the chalet and for the yeah. adults to actually enjoy themselves. Yeah. Can, can I just. Um, uh verify the story that um jeff has just said because um sheila lady sheila butlin was a great friend of mine and she told me by the time um, heidi hired you know um was being developed and the bbc had gone to they had sold out lady butlin had sold out her share, and she was mm. absolutely furious mm. that they hadn't taken the 
Heidi High seam and made one of the camps into um, a, a, a big, big Heidi High development. Because as she said, if um, they can do it in America like Walt Disney did, you know, they could do it with Heidi High. And Jeff is absolutely right um, that they missed the trick in not having one of the camps at least all kitted out as Heidi High and the Peggy character and the Gladys par character and all the other characters in the actual um, camp. Uh, but she told me that herself. Um, yeah. And she said they missed a big, yeah. big trick yeah. doing that. Yeah, but got, Sad, isn't Jimmy, it? Jimmy but never got, mind, because we did but they got their own years. <laughs> David and Jimmy, though, it was great because amazingly, when they realise that they've lost out on a whole, not just the financial aspect, but everything else, because um, they asked us at one point, could we go and judge a Nobby News contest at Butlins? And David, you see, they obviously realised, and when it was a success, they thought, well, oh, cash in now. David yes. said, absolutely yes. not. And they said, none of you no. go anywhere no. near them. No, and we never did it. We had to be loyal. No, we never did. But, uh, never mind. We're not. Can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think years, years later, years later to this, in in the the end of the nineties, I was presenting songs of praise, and I had oh. to go to Buscelli, to the Butlins camp, and the first oh. thing the manager said to me was, uh, "Ruth." Um, uh, you won't say anything like Heidi High and Hody Ho, will you? <laughs> I said, no, no, all right, I won't. Do that. Well, I stepped onto the flipping camp, honestly, Sue, and they, of course they were just going, hello, Ruth, Heidi High, Hody Ho, you know. <laughs> I, think, I think Warren has made the perfect um, mappings, though, don't you? I think probably that the Butlins ones were a bit too grand, but I think the Warners. Oh yes, but you'd have, you'd have you'd have broken them down. down, and I think it was actually perfect for for Maplins. Yes, I know, but remember that we had the last, uh, the line of chalets that were there before the war, and Not they kept seven. them, David, so they could actually film Heidi High. They were going to renew them, obviously, because a lot of the chalets around and about were all new, and they had you know, on suite facilities as they as it were, you know. Um, yeah. But they kept that line of uh, chalets that were, I Built think, in 1937. Pre war. Built in 1937. Mm. And um, mm. the, the camp, yeah. they yeah. a prisoner of war camp as well in, in, the, in the 45s. That's so right. Had a, <laughs> yeah. a history. And um, I've just made a documentary yes. on which and um, I've done a chapter on kinder transport when Jewish children escaped Nazi persecution uh, in 1939. And, and 10,000 yes. children came across through Harwich to escape That's right. the Nazis. Yes. And they were temporarily housed at Warner's Holiday Camp. And mm -hmm. um, I spoke to one chap who sadly passed away, who was, as a kid, was there. And um, he said it was, it, this was December 1939. It was bitterly cold. And they only survived because Dunlop lent us some hot water bottles. But uh, oh, you know, it's a, an interesting history, that camp. Yes, 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 wow. yes indeed. But I didn't know it. that, David. Mm. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't know about the kinder transport. Yeah. Anybody that is interested, it's fantastic because I've seen it. And um, David's just made a film uh, all around Harwich and it's uh, available on the DVD and it's selling yeah. out. So please do get your copies. Yeah. They'll make fabulous Christmas presents. Go on to his <laughs> website. Right. It's all be marvelous. Yeah. David, <laughs> David Webfield <laughs> at beastlyinternet.com. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Say that again, David. What was it again? David Web Films, all one word. Yeah. At beastlyinternet.com. Okay, so they, they, they email you for the order. Yes, it's fourteen ninety nine. Portrait of Harwich. Portrait of Harwich. And it's selling very well, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> oh, well done. Well yes. done, David. Well done. That's yes. brilliant. Wow. Congrats. Guys, I just want to manage the time because I know originally I said we would go up to 9 p.m. Um, mm -hmm. We still have three, more than 300 people watching. Um, and look, I'm, I'm quite happy to carry on. 
I just want to kind of give you guys the freedom to you know leave if you have to leave. If you want to take like a, if you want to stay and just take a comfort break, I'm, I'm more than happy for you to do that. Let's kind of yeah make the if you want to stay, we'll make it really informal, really relaxed. You need to kind of you know get a drink. We, we can come and go and kind of keep it quite informal, or you can go. It's kind of up to you guys. Did you say you've got three hundred questions left? <laughs> no, no, no. There's, <laughs> <laughs> oh there's probably more actually than that in the chat but no we've got um we've got just around 300 viewers still watching um 301 oh, to be exact that's, people that's still watching that's amazing well I, done I you to join us I, I, i've got to go because i promise i'd go and see my friend barbara she's 80 and i have to go and say hello to her she only lives down the road but I promise that I did, but I, just before I go, I just want to say, well, we all know because we speak to each other, so it's all fabulous. We all know that we're still really, really good mates. But I want to say, on behalf of us all, a big, big shout out to Kevin for organising this. It's a, it's a lot to do, you know, darling, to get everybody around at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I think you've done an amazing job. And also to all the listeners, oh, look at me and the viewers and everything else. Thank you ever so much for your great support. And it's lovely to know that something that was made in absolute faith all those years ago, it's still beloved. So I, for one, cheers. Cheers on and we're still here. And we're still talking about it. Heidi, hi. Heidi, <laughs> hi. Hi, ho. Heidi, ho. <laughs> God bless you, darling. Bye, Sue. Yeah, God bless. Thank I'll you see soon. you soon, everybody. Troll. All right, see you oh, soon. Oh, I love that, don't you? Troll. Uh, and she's gone there, cool. Uh, so, guys, are, are you all uh, happy to stay? Yeah, fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go now. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, well, Jeffrey, thank you so much again for joining yeah, us. Okay. Uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. God bless. Shall I turn myself off or will you turn? Oh, no, I'm it's quick leave. Uh, yeah, I think there's a leave button. Uh, Heidi, hi. Heidi, yeah. oh, hey, Jeff. God bless, stay safe. Love to Judy. Cool, now we're kind of the, the late night hardcore section, right? It's the, the hardcore <laughs> cast members. Is yeah. It, can I, can I'll, I, I'll give you another half an hour. Can, can I do an give advert? Another half an hour. Please, please, may I do an advert? Yep, why not? Let's go for it. Thank you. If anybody, because you've got so many viewers, and um, I, I'm wondering if any of you are readers, crime readers. Um, I now write crime crime thrillers as we know some of them have made the charts and if any of your friends like crime books and want to buy them for Christmas um, my web is www.lindaregananline.co.uk or Waterstones or Amazon they're all on they're all there thank Beautiful. you great cool thank you so much Ruth have you got anything to plug you haven't plugged anything yet <laughs> Well, darling, I do actually. <laughs> it's not for me, it's for my daughter, Lovie, okay. who actually was in the series of Heidi High. She played uh, one of the scenes in it. Now, Lori has written children's books uh, about a little girl called Hetty, all backstage. And of course, it's her experience of working, of being with me, because uh, Lowry was only about six when I first started Heidi High. And so um, that's all on Amazon. And they're the Hetty series backstage. Um, and she's doing very well with them. And they're very good children's books because they tell you all about um, what happens backstage, which not a lot of people know and understand how quite hazardous it can be. I'm not clever enough to write books like this lot or do films. Um, I was just a jobbing housewife, love, right the way through it all. I just did what was all on the page. Um, and I still do. Um, oh, you're modest. You're modest. You were fantastic, love. Ruth. You're too modest. Yeah, and you're still at it, Ruth. That's the thing. Yeah. You're still at it. Oh, and I loved your yes, daughter. Yes, I am. I yes, yes. Lovely. I ruined your daughter for you. I used to babysit her, didn't I? That's I ruined, right. I ruined That's loads. right. I pierced her ears and you told me. I couldn't me off. afford. I couldn't afford <laughs> babysitting because somebody had to do it while no, I was on the set. They were asked, They used to ask for you to do all the PAs when we were doing the summer season, and so I, I wasn't being asked to do the PAs because I was new to the show. And so I used to look after Lowry when I loved her dearly. But I bought her g-string knickers when she was about nine or eleven, and had her ears pierced and a heck, and Ruth nearly killed me. 
<laughs> I bet she did. I, I couldn't believe it. This daughter of mine went as a as a nine year old, came back as a nineteen year old. But I'll tell you what, you did that day as well. You had her ears pierced. Yes. yes. And um, and there was something else as well. G string. So this girl. G string. Geez, it was G string knickers. Yes. <laughs> But you know, this is how close, Kevin, we all were as um, the family ties within Heidi High. Um, and it, it, there will never be really a show like it because it was a family show anyway. Yeah. Because of the color in it, uh, the children loved it. You could sit there with, you know, your eight year old or six year old or five year old, and you could sit there with grandma and all the extended family, and nothing was offensive. Well, we did it. have one and script. that was the great. We, we had I one didn't... script that, that caused a bit of a problem with language. And oddly enough, I've just donated that script to um, the East Anglian Children's Hospice for, for an auction. And it's that the oh. script that the program was Orphans of the Storm. And we had one swear word where um, Alex Foster, the um, Oh, played by Ewan Hooper. Yeah, yes. He, he, yes. You remember that um, Peggy got sacked, didn't she? And she was on the station because um, I think... Alex That's right, Foster yes. tried it on with her. Uh, but um, Sammy resolved the situation. He had, uh, obviously, blackmailed Joe Matt. But surely, I mean, and, and, and it was only Foster, probably a, a it, dam or a blast or whatever. Yeah. No, he said, no, it wasn't anything awful. No, it was, it was he said, Oh, you bastards. And um, that's since been cut from the repeats, incidentally. But that, that oh, has it? Yeah, it oh. would be 40, 40 years ago, and bastards was considered offensive back then. But of course, today it's just mild, isn't it? Today, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I loved what you said, Ruth, about um, about Heidi High. About it was one of those shows where the grandparents could watch it, the kids would would, would watch it. That was the, yeah exactly what I remember kind of growing up. I remember kind of being in the room with my family. My mum was with there. With extended family, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it brings me on to a, a nice. Uh, it's a nice link actually to an another question, which is um, from Rich Thirty Three, which is uh, what sitcom do you think ranks with Heidi High today? Is there anything that gets close? George and Mildred. <laughs> Sorry, could, could you, I couldn't George hear all that. Could you have to say that question again? Yeah, yeah. So which I could, sitcom I do you think ranks with Heidi High today? So is there any kind of sitcom out now which is on par with Heidi High? I don't High? think so. Oh, I, see. Oh. I don't think so. It's, it's, it's I don't think so because that, that British comedy mm. um, is not there anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, taken it's, it's taken a different form. It's taken a different form. It's it, 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 comedy is far more cynical now, in my opinion, mm. than it was then. That was um, very. Um, it, 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 it was comedy that you couldn't take offence at, really, except for that one word, bastard. In yeah. how many nine series did we do? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's it. it I, I, you know, I think, it's just one offensive thing, apparently, that happened. But I, you know, I think the proof of the it wouldn't, pudding it wouldn't offend there, me. Um, it, I think the proof of the pudding there, Ruth, is that they're bringing all the old comedies back, and there's absolutely repeats, repeats. It says it, it sort of sums it up, doesn't it? Absolutely, well, it certainly does. Um, uh, uh, but things have got very cynical. And um, it, the, in the comedy field these days, I feel compared to what we had, which was this British seaside mm -hmm. comedy. I don't think uh, it was you know it was postcard could, comedy. Yeah, could they afford to do um, a hardy high day? Because it was a big scale, wasn't I it? Doubt with, it. With hundreds of camp I doubt it. Kind of thing, and it was a big production. Um, I, I, I would well. doubt it. And also, it's it it comedy too PC today as well. Is is comedy too clean? To be able to do like all the kind of all this kind of tongue and cheek kind of jokes that you would yeah. get, where the kids wouldn't really get them, but the adults would get them. You, you can't really do that anymore, can you? I mean, That's it. there's a whole different climate. Well, you can't. No, the risque jokes. No, you can't mm. because they they they're offensive to um, you know, to, uh, to what we have as our norm now. Mm. Uh, people 
can't be risque because they would say that that was extremely rude, you know, today. So, right, fair enough. You know, if you're living in that day and age, you're going to go with it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think they're missing out on subtlety. It's a different world. Um, it's a different world. It's a different world. Um, I, I'm really sorry, I I'm 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 to go. My dog is desperate to go out, and I've really <laughs> got to leave and take her out. She's going to... She just keeps looking at me. So I'm awfully sorry. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Linda, it's lovely to see you. Oh, it darling, really I love you dearly. God bless you. God bless you. We'll Send my love. When the lockdown's over. So, we yeah. definitely will. Send my love we to Tony. Yes, yeah. and my big love to Lo, Lolo and John. And Indeed. God bless you. Stay safe and have a happy Christmas, everyone. We're Thank you. Lots of love to Brian. Take care oh, of yourselves. You. Thank you. Love you loads. God Bye, bless. Darling. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Jillian, very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Cheers, Linda. Bye-bye. God bless. Cool. With only two of well, you, David, I get, there's I, me and me left. I get really <laughs> geeky. We get like really specific geeky questions, which I've been avoiding. Uh, so I wanted to kind of get reaction from everyone. Um, and, and there've been like a few kind of geeky, kind of specific questions. So I'll, I'll pick one out. So Ruth, right? So when you and Jeff were having champagne, the cork popped and champagne exploded everywhere. Your reactions looked genuine. Do you remember this? As if you didn't know that was going to happen. Was that planned? Do you no. know what that was referring to? I remember this happening because... Um, uh, uh, David Croft said to me, if it goes all over the place, Ruth, are you going to say anything? Uh, uh, now, you weren't allowed to add lib, as David will tell you. Uh -huh. You didn't add lib at all. You didn't alter one word of that script. So I said, add lib. He said, yeah, what are you going to say if, um, if it goes all over the place? And off the top of my head, I said, Oh, we are feeling frisky tonight, like that. <laughs> and he said, that'll do, that's fine. Well, unbeknownst to me, he had the prop boys shaking the champagne <laughs> up behind the flat of the, uh, uh, of the studio, um, uh, uh, the box set. And they were shaking it up. No wonder it went all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, didn't, you make a rude, you rude, didn't you make a rude gesture with the neck of that bottle? No, that was another time. <laughs> that was another How many bottles time. were there? Wow. It was on that one. That, I know the one you mean. That, yes, I know. Mm, yeah. Um, that was to do in a, in a restaurant that we were in. Uh, but this was in the, um, in the office, if I remember rightly. You know, mm -hmm. and she got him to, to draw up her leg. She'd got this pencil because in those days they didn't have much money for um, nylons. So they used to um, color their legs and, uh, and then they draw a pencil up there. Absolutely. And she, she got old um, uh, Sammy Cadell was playing the part there. Yes. Um, uh, and she got him to draw up her draw leg. The, the seam on the, and then on she the, used on to the go, leg. oh, can you just do it a bit higher? Just, just... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, okay, so but, David... Um, no. uh, cool. So, uh, David, a specific question for you. Uh, did your character have a name, or was it just the twins? In the, was, in the I was, we were Stanley and Bruce Matthews, and I was Stanley Matthews. <laughs> and uh, as a kid growing up, I, the, the real Stanley Matthews, the football, the Blackpool and England football was a big hero of mine. So I was thrilled to be named after Stanley Matthews. Stanley Matthews. OK, gotcha. Uh, and next one for Ruth. Is there anything left? And this is from Chris Doyle. Um, is there anything left you would like to achieve as an actress in your career? Yes, I'd like to do some Brecht. I know it sounds a bit high flown, but it isn't. Uh, Bertolt Brecht um, wrote Mother Courage. And I'm of an age now to play it because I'm, I'm, I'm in my late 70s, and that's the age you should play it, I think. Um, there are one or two parts I'd like to do like that, 
But whether they will come my way, who knows, darling? Who knows? Because this lockdown has um, sort of um, really put a, a stymied uh, uh, on 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 uh, on theatre, really. Yeah. You know. So we'll have to see what happens after it. Okay. You know, we really okay. will. Gotcha. And uh, another question from Chris. I'll put it to both of you. Would you ever do like a reality TV show, like I'm a Celebrity? Well, if they pay me about 75 grand, <laughs> I could, could, <laughs> could suffer in silence. Put my head in amongst a load of cockroaches for 75 grand, yeah. Yeah, that's a going rate, isn't it? They pay about 75 to 100 yeah. grand per person, yeah. So the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Dave is available if you want. Well, yeah. I, I have <laughs> actually done one. Um, I did um, the Full Monty Girls' Night Out. Uh -huh. which won an Emmy, and I got it in the post last week, an Emmy Award for um, 2019. It oh, got wow, it. Congrats. So I'm very thrilled. About, and and um, I was very thrilled to be able to be involved in that. Um, and uh, Victoria Derbyshire was in that with me as well. So um, I'm rooting for her in the castle. Up in North Wales, I might be. I think it's going to be jolly chilly up there. Oh, yeah. well. be freezing, oh dear, yeah. dear, dear, dear. Prefer the jungle. You know? you. Prefer the jungle to a cold Welsh castle. Oh yes, so would I. Yeah. Any day. Yeah, any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, many, many thanks uh, for this, Kevin. I'm going to have to go now. But can I say just before I go, I've got lots of little munchkins watching this, or my grandchildren. Uh -huh. I've got five of them. So I'll just say, love you. Aww. See you soon. Bye-bye, <laughs> oh. David. Bye -bye. Take Bye -bye. care of soon. Lots of love. God bless. Bye. See you, David. Yeah, Lots of Bye -bye. love to the family. And to yours. Take care. Bye. Well, uh, Bye, loves. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Kevin, that, that's it, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a wrap, isn't Kevin, it? Kevin, I think we've reached very a natural kind conclusion. Of you. <laughs> Great fun. Thank you for all your work, Kevin. Oh, thank you so much yes. for joining. Thanks to everyone. For very, watching. very nice, Kevin. Thank you very, very much indeed. Bye-bye. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Take care, Ruth. See Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. -ho. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You can go now if you want. <laughs> oh, you can stay. Are you staying? You have to turn it off, Kevin. I've got oh, no okay. idea. <laughs> yeah? Push, that button. Push the button. Push the right. button. There we go. Okay. God bless. All right. Bye, Ruth. Bye, Bye love. Bye. Bye, Bye, Ruth. Cool. So I think we have now reached a natural conclusion to the Highs and High reunion. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still with me, still, uh, I see quite a few people still with me, uh, then please do follow me on Twitter at the Kevin Durham and also on Instagram at the Kevin Durham and also on Facebook at the Kevin Durham. And also I'm kind of thinking about what reunion I should do next as well. I'm kind of thinking maybe trying something a bit bigger maybe a back to the future reunion i don't know if that's too much of a jump or if i maybe i should keep in british tv and maybe do like a red dwarf or or something um oh, ruth is back i think hello ruth <laughs> i think ruth is oh dear I don't know. That's all right. Kevin. That's welcome surprise I'm sorry just wrapping up it's all good <laughs> <laughs> lovely Take to see care. you face again i'll try all bye. right see you ruth bye bye bye, bye. bye. Oh, technology. Gotta love it. But once again, I have been Kevin Durham. Uh, and if you do have any suggestions of shows that I should do reunions on, then please do send me a message. Let me know your thoughts. I'll start arranging the next one in the next few weeks. I've also got a really big animation project that I'm working on. I'm um, aside from doing this, the celebrity interview stuff. Uh, you'll see lots of my other celebrity interviews on this YouTube channel. I'm also a comedy writer and I've got a, uh, a pilot for a comedy animation coming up called Time Family. And you can check that out at timefamily.co.uk. But once again, thank you so much for watching, uh, watching. I wish you all the best. And until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Cheers. Oh, I should... I
I should I should log off with Hardy Hi. Oh, ho. I'm sure you're saying it as well. All right, cool. All right, take care, guys. Cheers.